Hey, folks. We're back, and uh, we have our uh, newly bionic man as well as uh, Steve. So, I am I am now the six million and one peso man, as opposed to just the six million peso man. A lot of investment. Still... <laughs> <laughs> I figured Craig sat there and tr- took his ear in trade for Cuban sandwiches. <laughs> You know what? You know what I didn't get this time around. Last time they gave me an assessment cup, my 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 stapies. This time they didn't give me an assessment cup. <sighs> what a rip off! Those rat bastards stole my bone. Man. <laughs> Thankfully, I've got the other one still packing. Oh well, that's good. That's good. You might never. The only you one never know. Either. You might need the extra. <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, speaking of extra, well, not really, uh, but we were just talking about this, and it's perfect, and uh, it's the greatest way to start the uh, the thing. So there's going to this... be fish on. <laughs> oh, no, this is – that is good. That is good. Black Twitter is uh, magical. That That's something we can all say with certainty. But, but they um, with kings. They with kings. That's right. That's right. So it seems that some 15,000-plus peer-reviewed climate research papers published in the last 20 yeah, years, yeah. they're based on something that kind of isn't real. Well, so, it, uh, they're, they're so, real according to a guy named Michael McDoesn't Exist. Mm, <laughs> so, mm. so, so we gotta we got to actually go into kind of the details here. This is one of those things where we unfortunately have to talk about the nitty-gritty and this is the stuff that Craig and I sit there and bitch about in like shorthand. But basically, what's ended up happening? So we got a we got a climate record, and that climate record is roughly about 150 years long. An actual climatological period is roughly 30 years. So do the math. You've got five distinct climate periods. What they try to do is they try to use all this overlapping stuff. When we start talking about temperature changes over those periods, uh, and uh, this is not like that the Earth is only 150 years old and climate No, it's 6,000 like years old. Everybody knows young that. Earth. I mean, uh, they, they I are kind of like – right? they, It is kind of <laughs> like young Earth creationism as in there is no climate change prior to 150 years ago. And I just want to say hello to all of our listeners on the other side of the flat Earth in Australia. Hope you're having a, that's, a great that's day. That's true. How do they stay on? That's really the question. I'm, the Velcro, I'm, man. Is that what it is? Or well, they have they really big the spiders the there, so they use their spider silk to kind of tie everything they, they, down. They, uh, they, use, or, uh, they use some drywall screws to, to make sure they got the soft side really stuck on tight, and they mm-hmm. uh, just wrap, wrap some Velcro or, around their ass and sit down. Well, you know, it could be that, or it could just be that, like, the scary stuff that we see in Australia is the stuff that figured out to hang on, and all of the Australians are just terrified what's in the great abyss below because that stuff, <laughs> that's where the really dangerous sharks come in. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, all those well, that's where the drop bears drop into, and what eats below. a drop bear? So I have a Pathfinder, right? So I'm going to be setting up a, 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 like a D&D type game. They actually have in one of their monster manuals the blue ringed octopus, and I am so going to have to <laughs> have to face it. It's going to be like in their swimming pool or something like that, just for shits and giggles. Yeah, you just woke up today, and there's a blue ring octopus. <laughs> what do you do? All of a sudden, you can't breathe. Step on it. <laughs> step on a little shit. It's so cute, but step on it. But so going back to the climate thing, so we got these. Uh, they, basically, they make this assumption kind of that prior to uh, the Industrial Revolution, there was no climate change, except we know that's not entirely true. In the years since, what we've noticed is that there are distinct periods of warming and cooling or leveling off. So between 1910 and 1940, there was a period yeah. of warming that exactly matches the 1980 to, now, like, 2000 period. Out in the period. ocean, there's this, there's this variation kind of thing, and it's the Atlantic something or another oscillation, AMO. That's, that's, that, that's we'll that you're to getting that. to. Yeah. We'll get to that. It's actually so so so. Originally, it was the Enso, which is El Nino Southern Oscillation. Right. Um, but what right, ended that up one happening? Kind of exists, though. What ended up happening in the 1996 to 2016 period, a 20-year period, was that we got completely flat, no change, to the point where they were publishing papers going, "Hey, yeah, guys, 
you know, if it doesn't start within 10 years, we're going to have to do something. Okay, well, we've passed 10 years with no significant temperature change. It's going to have to be 15 years. Oh, we've passed 15 years. It's going to have to be 20 years. And yeah, so they were, they, like, at least ENSO is ocean temperature, and that does happen. But they're talking about, like, these global shifts that are not happening. So what ended up happening was because they didn't have a good explanation for the pause, they started investigating what could possibly have caused it, because we all know that everything, that, that according to the theory of anthropogenic global warming, that there's no possible way that natural variation could be increasing warming or decreasing warming or anything else. The only possible factor is anthropogenic, and the only possible anthropogenic outcome is a, a progressively warming planet at a certain rate, which we didn't hit. So they invented this thing called the AMO, or the uh, Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation. That was the one, yeah. And the principle and premise behind the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation was basically so that they could tune their models with yet another variable that didn't actually exist, or that they didn't have any hard data for. But if they did that, all of a sudden they could explain everything and they could do something where they would subtract out the quote unquote effect of this thing that they were absolutely sure existed. And that would allow their models to align with the previous theory, even though it didn't actually align with the actual data. So that was what they did, is they'd use this to track the signal to produce the net effect that would have happened if it wasn't for the AMO. So what ended up happening in the last few days is this dude named Michael Mann, who anybody who's followed climate for a long time should know him because he's probably the, one of the most hated figures. Yeah, in, he's in the gigantic dick. Is what he, he, is. he really is. Honestly, like, don't, don't sit there and listen to, like, what's up with that or any of the other stuff. Just watch him at a Senate hearing. He's a fucking snake. Oh, my God. Yeah. He is, he is the slimiest, sleaziest piece of crap ever, and that oh, look, is just you know, his he personality. Such a, he did such a great job with that one fucking graph, you know. Uh, well, yeah, so so that anybody who's heard, heard of man's na nature trick, it comes from Michael Mann. And what Michael Mann did is Michael Mann had a paper. We talked about this last week, actually with bristlecone pines. And the bristlecone pines, he was charting, this is going back to proxies and the smooshing of the record and all this other stuff. So yeah. Michael Mann produced the first hockey stick graph. And the hockey stick graph had bristlecone yeah. pines, and he, they all of a sudden this shut off. The reason off. Al Gore is famous, by the way. So if you this, want to thank anybody for that, is. yeah, thank Michael Mann for this shit. So what it, there's a couple things that people noticed with Michael Mann's uh, graph in nature. One, all of a sudden he artificially cut off the date, even though we had data from Bristlecone Pines going some 30 to 60 years after the date at which he cut it off. The reason that he cut it off at that specific date was because <laughs> after that date, the tree, the tree ring data <laughs> it was an inconvenient <laughs> truth. It went down. So he just basically cut off the date, and said that was fine. And then Briffa came along a little bit later, and then uh, Briffa did something that was slightly less ethical, where he took the same bristlecone pine series, and then he spliced on the temperature record where they chose to diverge, so it looked like this continuing trend. Yeah, I like and where they kind of like shit by 50 years, too. Yeah. That's, oh, that's a separate issue, yeah. So that's another thing that they did was uh, the original, uh, the alignment uh, so fucking bad. wasn't particularly good with the Industrial Revolution as was originally forecasted, so they shifted the data back like 50 years so that it lined up a little bit better. Yeah, that, that little gap just kind of went away. So, okay, that's yeah. smart. Oh, like a god of the gaps. So, so... <laughs> So man is man is slightly hated because a he comes out and he comes out as a douchebag. He basically will, if you if you get him up in front of Congress, he'll spend the entire time insulting everybody who disagrees with him, then praising the Republicans who agree with him, while simultaneously shitting on anybody who is not a progressive. And he is just he's a slimy douchebag. I I highly recommend anybody watch yeah. watch his Look, watch and, his. And you don't even here's the thing you could you can be gung-ho, full-on, uh, humans cause everything, and still hate this fucker. Yep. Um, he, he is, you really he is, can. He's a piece of shit. There, he is there the exact is. opposite of a science. He's like, science it does things in a certain way, and he decided to do everything opposite of that. He, he basically, he starts with his conclusion and works backward. Uh, I have no doubt that he, oh, that's the other thing is that, uh, he, he wrote a special algorithm for his pinecone series that augmented it. So basically it, it, would, uh, it would suppress earlier dates 
so they wouldn't show up as much yeah. of a spike. Augment, and augment is a nice way of saying fuck to it. Augmented later dates, so they got a, an addition factor to their dates, and that, that like, spiked the curve statistically higher than it should have been, so it would have been, a, like, it, there still would have been a hockey stick appearance, because, well, you pump CO2 into the atmosphere, and plants tend to grow a little bit better with CO2, so <laughs> that's, that's a problem with plant-based uh, you know, proxy records, but yeah, he did all that stuff. He is like sleazy as sleazy as sleazy. He has yeah. actually sued somebody who wrote negatively about him, and he hasn't met the, the lawsuit's ongoing, and it has been ongoing for like 15 years now. You don't yeah, say. Yeah, that was that was fucking funny. He is. Ah, he is. He is the sleaziest. He is piece of shit. He really is. He really is. Like I can I can uh. listen to to uh, Zeke House Father. He has, he, Zeke House father is on the opposite side of me from climate. He comes in, he says the models are great, they're all fantastic, but uh -huh. he's not a sleaze bag. Michael right. Mann, Michael Mann's a sleaze bag. But uh, the AMO turned out to be a little bit inconvenient <laughs> because that didn't match the most recent five years of data that we had. So he just published a paper where he fiddled with the models a little bit and then said, oh, well, looks like we didn't need the AMO. The only problem is that as soon as you say... Looks like we don't need the AMO to explain anything. That means that the 15,000 some odd papers that were produced based on the AMO get thrown into the garbage can. Now, which is normal, by the way, um, in science, if you if you come up with a better idea and it has better explanation, then all the stuff that was based off of the bad idea has to be either reevaluated or tossed. That's that's partially that's normal. true. But that's all my Earth-centric. Ideas, come on! The sun revolves around the Earth, guys. It, it, right. If you have the, the key, the key for what Craig is saying is you have to have a better idea right. that explains what happened. In this case, it said it's this not. thing that you've been studying this entire time just didn't exist in the first place. Right. Which now, is very, very different than I've come up. I with was giving. I was being polite there, which is I know not quite so normal for me when I'm talking about an asshole like man. Uh, I, you know what? It's okay. You're on a lot of good drugs. Yes, I am. God, you know, this, uh, kids don't do drugs except these drugs. God bless them. <laughs> as a chemical engineer, I thoroughly support drugs. All the drugs. As often as possible. Just, you know, it's your brain. Make sure you know what you're putting onto it. Well, you know... Beyond yeah. that, beyond that, just don't hurt anybody. <laughs> but yeah, that you was that, that was the interesting news of this week is that we have fifteen thousand papers that were just rendered irrelevant, not because a <laughs> brand new hypothesis or paradigm has come into light for climatology, but because Michael Mann said so because it was no longer convenient to have this one theory kicking around yep. that was previously explaining the other stuff. Now, expect a whole slew of papers to come out about why AMO is still relevant, and their papers are still okay. Yep. Uh, I feel bad for them, too, because, you know, if... if um, Man, guys, this wasn't like, a horrible waste of money, resources, and time. Well, he's kind of well, like the AOC of, of climate change, you know? Like, like yeah. people, people tend to follow his lead on shit like this, and so now you're going to have uh, a whole bunch of people who are distraught because... All this work they were doing, which was getting probably decent uh, grant stipends, uh, pouring down their departments, all that's going to dry out because the AMO is no longer going to be something that is substantiated. And again, when we I talk about this stuff so. in terms of like um, simulation work, at some point you have to have a physical basis study. Like a lot of good simulation work is usually used as the basis to generate hypotheses to spur better, um, better uh, experimental work. You know, it's like your pilot study. Unfortunately, and in climate change, they uh, they don't really they, – they have right. a general attitude of we prefer the models to real data. And yeah. I actually have a paper where they outright say this. I have a paper. Did I ever link this paper before? Did I ever put in Trenberth and uh, Alex? You might have. Sure, right, I'll bring it in. Again. I mean, keep in mind that – a paper is not going to be the end-all and be-all, but a paper saying something that's stunning is pretty fucking funny. It, it is, it, it, and it's on, like, I'll actually, uh, I'll, I'll link it, and then you guys, it's on page, like, 9 or 10 or something like that. 
I think right. that's it right here. I'll pull it up, but it's, will, it's one of my, like, it's one of those things <laughs> where, oh, fuck, that's not the good one, good link. I'm looking for the PDF. This looks like, I think this is the PDF. Yeah, that's the PDF. Let me just check the page that it's on. Yeah, if you're ever going to, like, link something to someone when you're talking about, like, a paper or whatever, and I know that he's not even going through this part of the route, don't send him, like, a CNN article. <laughs> Yeah, that, has, no. that has a link somewhere. I know that you're not doing that, but like, like even that is like that's just that's what people typically see these things as is like a headline inside of some some blogger's article on CNN or Fox or whatever. Yeah, if it doesn't at least have .edu in it, yeah. you should probably <laughs> at least try and find where it links to the source. Like, like find find the actual journal if you can't like if it's Elsevier or Springer or whatever the fuck you know and you can't get into it, fine. But you know if you're talking to like a scientist friend, usually they'll have institutional access of some variety. And you can get the actual PDF. The PDF's what you want. You want the actual article. You know, so not like a, a news article, but the journal article. Mm. And and that's the thing that actually matters. If a journalist fucks it up, uh, it's usually really will. apparent in that the abstract has nothing to do with what the journalist said. Well, I mean, we can uh, just look at some of the... Uh, quite a lot for you. Well, a perfect example of that is the CDC uh, gun death data, which right. is, uh, you know, complete... Uh, well, it completely exonerates uh, basically any gun owner as just a person supporting civil rights and makes anybody right. out to, you know, be a gun grabber, as you might say, as somebody who just hates civil rights. All right, so page, is it page, it's, okay. It's page okay. 10, and I'm actually going to... And that'll be linked right. below, by the way, for anybody the that's tuning in. The actual portion of the paragraph so that I can narrow you in, but it's... It's on the uh, the second or the, oh, the right hand second side. Column. Yeah. Second column. It says, "Thus, while the spread of various val values provides some measure of agreement, it generally greatly overestimates the uncertainty we can assign to our best <laughs> estimates. Therefore, we have a lot more confidence in the values we have assigned <laughs> than indicated by the spread within the tables. Hey. Top of the atmosphere values are no within plus or minus three percent or better, except that the net is or was 0.85 plus or minus 0.15 Hansen et al. 2005." And Hansen et al. 2005 is in fact a model; it is not a measurement. Whereas this paper was supposed to be measuring the values using the series satellite data at the top of the atmosphere for. Well, that's fucked up. Yeah. What did you guys I, do? That's an oopsie. Oh my god. And, and I actually like I read this paper and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, there has to be something horribly wrong. So I actually pulled the series spec sheet from NASA. And went through it, and the, the like the variance that they had to calibrate it every day from a specific right. laser emission from the surface that gives it a full spectrum scan, and it's like plus or minus 0.01 percent of the reading, and they're like, yeah, we didn't like the actual value that we got, so <laughs> we're going to substitute our own. Like, what are you guys doing? Holy shit! That is that is a real statement from a real climate saver. This is, um, alright, this is 2009. Bams, alright. What the fuck? So that's deep in it, too. Even. It, it yeah. is. I mean, it's, we're it's not. It's almost as good as the psych papers that I've linked in the past where they say, well, we tried to replicate these studies that we're basing our entire paper off of. Alright, this is in, this is Boulder, and. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I, you know, far be it for me to say that anything I've done is, uh, is, has been as, as good as that, we'll just say. I have a feeling I, I could write a better paper <laughs> in my current position, though. You, I, I like, the, the, here's the thing that really pisses me off. So when, oh, man. when we talk in these They hit forms, that in the fucking reference. That's insane. Yes, they did. So, so I had to actually go and pull all of these papers all the way back. Like it was, I I did a whole deep dive on this, and every once in a while you get somebody going for the science, and you're like, okay, well, what do you what do you think about this language? They're like, that didn't come out of an actual paper. I'm like, yes, it did. <laughs> and it was peer reviewed. <laughs> oh, it's painful. Well, and, and that's one of the reasons, dear listeners, why when we sit here and we talk about these things, and I go, I don't believe that shit at all. One of the reasons that I have lost significant faith in the scientific system as a whole is because shit like this gets through. 
the, the issue that I have with Kern Berth et al. 2009 is not that they substituted their own value over experimental data. That's that. The fact that three other editors of the paper had to read it and say, yep, that's okay. Well, I mean, this kind of falls back to the, uh, oh, shit, the, uh, the group that uh, just ran a bunch of farcical studies through on uh, gender studies bullshit a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, the, the Sokol Squared. Yes, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yes, yeah, Sokol Squared. Yeah, Which that. is built off of Suckle's work from, but he actually didn't publish in, uh, like, real journals. Well, no, he he, uh, he he got five, was it five papers that were, that would have been published had he not blown it. He got, or, uh... Which was a smart thing to do, because, you know, otherwise he would have been up on charges for fraud. <laughs> and just for anyone that's not familiar, Sokol Squared... <clears throat> It's, uh, what was that, 2017, oh, God, I knew some of these people, too, when they did it. Well, anyway, uh, they basically just took, uh, in one case, they it. took portions of Mein Kampf and replaced uh, Jews that was with... One of them. They, that they was thought, one. they got to the point where they thought this couldn't possibly work after yep. they got, like, six papers in out of seven. And, and then, so the last one, and some, whatever the feminist fucking whatever it was, they just swapped out a couple of different words... Like you know, white for Jew or whatever the fuck it was, or, or yeah. male for Jew, and they they accepted it. They're like, yeah, it's totally. Oh right. yeah, it, it was straight plagiarism. I mean, it wasn't yeah. even like above and beyond the fact that it's mind comp. It was straight now, plagiarism. Now, if ever you hear somebody say, and that's how gra gravity is racist in context, that comes from the original Sacco paper, because that was yeah. what he published, and that was in a postmodernist paper back in the early 90s, or the, was it late 90s? I think it was late 90s. I believe well, it was. Square decided it did it in the 80s, but it was like the publishing that was going to happen was going to be early 90s. So Sockle Square did this very recently. I think it was actually like 2014, 2015. So uh, it was a little later than that. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Because uh, I, I, I knew um, Helen Pluckrose at the time uh, and a couple other people that were involved. Uh, Lindsay and then um, what's his name? couple others. Anyway, yeah. And the, the funny part was, these were actually, like, hardcore progressives who were out on the sleeve progressives, and they were sitting there, and they decided that, you know, part of this was because they thought the right was making shit up. And then right. they, they found out the hard way of it was not true. And, and there's actually been a lot of other studies that have found things like they don't actually sit there and check anything that goes through, or that they'll reject it. They, they, they read the read author your, or the name of the institution. They will read the author, the name of the institution. They will read the headline of the article. They'll read the title. They'll yep. read maybe maybe the abstract, and they'll read maybe the conclusion, and they'll see if you have graphs that look pretty. They don't fucking care. Yep. Oh, yeah, there, there is, there is zero scientific, scientific rigor theory. here. Zero. And that's how we get it, climate papers that are based off the measurements of satellite data that sit there and right in the middle of the thing say... I mean, I think that's a little bit unfair. <laughs> that's a little unfair. Now, if you want to see a perfect example of a shit paper, um, look up feminist glaciology. Yes. Oh, yes, that's a good one. That's or, a anything, or anything by example. Craig Mansfield. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not fair. I write very well. Hey, it might be full of itself, but it's not full of shit. <laughs> Thank you. That, that may be true. <laughs> I, will, I will accept that as a compliment because that's how much I need that right now. Gotcha. It'll be like mine comp for plastics and woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> yes, these these plastics are put in the oven for only so much time. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, when you when you heat oh the plastic man. to 150 degrees, it squeezes out in a nice nice extrusion. Are you making uh, lampshades with this plastic? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, they're, uh, they're all traces of gold were removed first. Um, That's good. Uh, no, no jewelry was involved. Now this is not uh, an oven made of a uh, fibrous cellulose material, is it? <laughs> there might be some fibrous cellulose material that was used in the oven, though. Right, right, right. Now we're talking about a vacuum oven here. You know, you have to prepare things properly. He has the plastic screaming as he put it through the extruder. Ah, <laughs> uh, sigh. But yep, yeah, that's uh, 
That's how we oh. get 15,000 papers wiped out by one oh. dude who's kind of a prick. Because it speaking was of, uh, inconvenient. Speaking of extreme anti-Semitism here, um, has have, uh, has Androff Cuomo actually gotten his ass? Uh, has he gotten his balls in the vice yet? Or well, no, no, no. So, so he he's has up said to five he's now. Very sorry for having murdered fifteen thousand people. No, no, no. It wasn't. No, no. It was, no. He, no. It was about and, the fact that he did some girls. Oh no, he's also apologizing for having murdered fifteen thousand people. But he oh, doesn't really? feel. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't uh, feel that he should have to resign for this. Oh, he's that's right. He said he was going to sign away his emergency powers if he was told to. That's exactly right. God, he's yeah. such a prick. So. So they, they are – the Democrats are actually going after them, you know. So in, in terms of another thing that happens to be politically inconvenient that is being truncated in its usage. That uh, sounds like a Viagra joke. No, no. I mean it, it matches up with the 15,000 <laughs> 15, papers, right? Oh, the AMO oh, was boy. too useful to us when, when all of a sudden the data didn't match <laughs> If Cuomo this, this is now conspiracy level. This is conspiracy commitment. Each one of these people had their name on a paper. <laughs> you predicted Mr. Gold, this. Mr. Goldstein, Mr. Feldman, I'm afraid, I'm afraid you've outlived your usefulness. Please get in the nursing home. Oh, that would be funny. Well, it wouldn't be funny. It'd be very sad. It'd be really fucking like, horrifying, yeah. <laughs> kind of like the 15,000 people that were murdered by my governor. Yeah. But it's okay because Orange Man is bad. And yeah, now it's Orange very, very bad. Gone, so the ends are murdering old people justifies both political coup. Well, you know, you've got to have your priorities at the end of the day. Right. Yeah, right. vote blue no matter who, right? Right, I mean, it's, it's not, not like, like uh, you know, there's... And Prominent and people it, out there with. All right, and then you have to get mad regret. now because you have to get extremely mm -hmm. angry on Twitter because now hashtag blue and on is a thing. Hold on, hold on, and <laughs> we can say that in memoriam to all those old people who were sacrificed at the altar of the orange man bad, we have nominated a patient with dementia for the White House. <laughs> yes, President Silver Alert. Well, uh, I, I guess, guess you could say it's. Uh, uh, Feel competent at any degeneration. Well, that's like, like healthy at any size, right? The, the, it's the greatest generation that the world forgot. I mean, sorry, that forgot the world. God. Oh. What a what a time we're in. What is blue and on? Blue and on is the uh, you could say the you know how you know how blue maga hats were like the disgusting inevitable. Uh, evolution of a, of a retarded beam. No, so, I don't. Well, so basically, the the day that uh, the day after election day, um, someone decided to go ahead and, uh, and <coughs> do a paint can fill on the background and turn those red hats into blue hats. Because uh, that you know, as soon as Biden got in the office, we're making America great again. Ah, got so it. In the, in the yeah. same vein, um, blue and on is kind of the the right wing. Uh, equally cringe reaction, though it's not so terribly cringe in the in the execution now, given all of the the salt that's been coming out of it. Uh, of basically all that shit like Russia Gate and all those other little hoaxes and theories, like equally stupid and equally as evangelical as anything that came out of QAnon. Yeah, and I would uh, I would be happy to link that to everybody, but the uh, Blue Anon page got nuked. Because, oh, no, just hashtag uh, Blue Anon on Twitter. Just, let's oh, yeah, I mean, you can search, search that, but, yeah. you know, the Urban Dictionary page got nuked because... Oh, yeah, the Ur yeah, yeah, hold on a second. I got, I got that somewhere. Hold on. Uh, let me, um, blah, blah, blah. I believe that's the one. Blue Anon. There you go. And here's the aftermath. Sorry, we couldn't find Blue Anon. Wow. A loosely organized network of Democrat voters... Politicians and media personalities who spread left-wing conspiracy theories such as the Russia hoax, Jesse Smollett hoax, Ukraine hoax, Covington Kids hoax, Brett Kavanaugh hoax. Um, Blue and on adherents firmly believe that right-wing extremists are going to storm Capitol Hill any day now and remove lawmakers from office, hence the need for the deployment of thousands of National Guard stationed at the U.S. Capitol. An example, hey, if you see that brave Democrat sitting in the Capitol steps on March 5th to send a message to QAnon, 
Uh, yeah, that was blowing on you. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Tibbs. <laughs> on March 5th. Oh, Didn't nice. even last two days. Well, you know, it's what's really funny, and if you want to you wanna start talking about the things that really kind of... So, so I am a logical person, to, to a fault, right? Like, it, it does sometimes... Fair enough. You can be logical to a fault. And I can be as... Dim, like, when we argue about the stuff that we argue about, a lot of that has to do with very specific rules that I have set up saying, I do not permit this kind of information unless it passes X number of checkpoints. A mask right? isn't a mask unless it's certified. All of the checkpoints, right? So, so I can I can absolutely admit that I can go a little bit too far on this, but one of the things that will switch switched me from being a liberal progressive to being conservative libertarian type is logic. The fact, well, it actually it actually wasn't because they have their own internally consistent logic. The problem is that they try to memory hold the shit out of things. And it uh-huh. used to be, it used to be like not so bad. Like all of a sudden, the link of something that you wanted to go look up is now gone or broken six months after you looked it up, right? Which can happen. And then all of a sudden, it was like, you know, it's, it's like the it's like the, <laughs> the Black Lives Matter riots, where it's mostly peaceful protests, and then six months go by, and all of a sudden, a whole bunch of old folks stumbling through the Capitol is an insurrection, right? Like we we completely ignore these cities that are billions of dollars in damage. Well, don't worry. They, they found uh, lots of guns at the uh, capital. Oh, breaking. Ah. Damn it. No, sorry. They, they didn't. Anyway, continuing. Right. <laughs> like, it, it's the memory hole stuff that I think sticks with some people because, like, you can't just pretend this stuff didn't happen. Like, every single time they want to talk about the voter fraud stuff, which we never investigated... Well, well, there have been 61 a, cases, and they have all been dismissed on technicalities and standing. Well, yeah, that's a – but that's the point, though, right? Like, we never really – Well, did certainly on one it. of these 61 cases was dismissed on an evidentiary basis. Wait. Oh, sorry. No. No, all, all 61 were dismissed on uh, – No, I think, I think anything that Sidney Powell brought up was dismissed on evidentiary grounds. No, no, even that those. Very well, could be true. None of those actually even saw the evidence. Honest to God. Well, that's that's funny because Which nobody else did either. Yeah. Yeah. Fair, <laughs> fair, absolutely, yes. But I mean, they did. They wouldn't even let him, you know, bring in his fairies or dragons or anything. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit! Like, I hope, like, like, of all the people that get sued by um by by these these uh, voting systems companies, I hope that that. Lynn Woods and Sidney Powell actually get to court and start trying to stutter out their fucking crack and horseshit. I would love the defense. That. I just I, I want to see that, that. Just like the my pillow guy, his pillows aren't even that good. Just leave him alone. Like well, I mean, it, it, like there, there's plenty of other things that went horribly, horribly wrong that they that that were like legitimate arguments that we should have brought forward and we should have challenged on like real serious grounds and been like, hey, yeah. You guys fucked up, like royally fucked up. Well, questions that have yet to be answered and are going to come back up again. Quite simply, you know the uh, well, the Pennsylvania constitutionality of mail-in well, votes. The important issue. thing is that there's a lot of a lot of state and local governments that are that are actively engaged in this right now, and you can see this in the way that the Democrats the, at the federal level are desperate to get this uh, was it HR one to go through. Or, or HB1, whatever the fuck it's called, the, the first, the one that fucks up voting for the entire country. HR1? Yeah, I guess that's the one. Yeah. I mean, it, so, so to be honest, I'm not super worried well, is it, about is it that. Is it HR or HB? Because it's no, it's, it's HR1. Yeah, HR1. Okay. I, to be honest, I'm not super worried about that because half the, like, the, the thing that, here's how this always works, right? Well, it's going to get thrown out. The Democrats change a rule, or they, they actually do a whole bunch of other shit, right? It's it's super unethical and borderline illegal. They then go in, once they gain the benefits of that, they go and change the rules so it becomes legal, and then the Republicans beat them at their own game. And it no, happens cycle after cycle after cycle. So I'm not too worried. Like, it's a shame because they're basically covering up for their own, like, misdeeds in this past election. And literally, like, you can go through what H.R. 1 does. And it's a line by line. This is how we cheated in in the twenty 
in the 20, uh, 2011, yep. right? Like, it's a line-by-line... No, this is just what saying, we just be hilarious. Well, not even 2020, like, like, this is, it's, like, here's the playbook of how it, no. how we've been doing here's it, how thing. it's done. Here's the thing, if you read through it, if you read through it, there is a fantastic section about how if you knowingly lie and publish statements about the elections, they can put you in jail. They will go after you for putting out memes, and it will be it will be tossed so fucking quickly on First Amendment grounds. I am looking forward to that. It is it is a First Amendment lawyer's wet dream what they have been trying to pass through this thing. I cannot wait to well, see. Well, not that just happen. this. There's actually quite a few things that are being pushed that really need to see the Supreme Court. Like, I, I I cannot like like this is the kind of shit that will be thrown out at the district level. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, even goes, John Roberts anywhere. will, like, see some of these things on their way out. And and that's really saying something, because John Roberts is, uh, well, we can just he say that he has a very shit. limp wrist. He's, yeah. It's not like he's been jerking himself off so much. Well, I mean, or, you know, that adopted, well, <clears throat> anyway. Yep. I thought Justice Roberts was one of the few people who was kind of like, what the fuck, with, with the, uh, when they threw out that court case. No, well, he was the one screaming, what the fuck, when they were trying to get it in. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was like, how How are you trying to hear this? We've we've got fucking riots out in the streets. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah, he's no. A pussy. Fuck Roberts, mm-hmm. yeah, he's, uh, he's a piece of shit. I mean, nearly all the Republicans are pussies, nearly all the time. Well, Roberts that's, isn't a Republican, why... though. This guy is one of those, this guy's one of those uh, um, wearing the chaps full frontal pussies. This guy needs to be out on his ass. As with no balls, any, none. As with any. Of Bader that Ginsburg, man. six feet under the ground, has more balls than him. Probably, probably. Oh, like, at least she, like at least she knows how to stand on her fucking feet, you know. Well, I mean, it's. Regardless I mean, how much structural support she needed to do it. Fair point. I mean, you know what? At least, at least she knew where she was most of the time. Yeah. Well, at least up until the end. Well, <laughs> until she was being paraded around. You know, and we were doing like, the, she, the weekend she breathing? Yeah, hold on a second. Let me get out the uh, bellows to make sure you can see that. Oh, it was that. It, it, it's uh, it's like the uh, the Rick and Morty episode with the dead cat lady. Yeah, uh, you've lost me on that one. Yep, oh, I quit on. television right around the Rick and Morty era, so oh. I don't... No media references. I mean, have you never seen own. the movie Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead? Because I think that's a better reference now. I don't know that one. That's uh, because you it's know, so it's, fucking old. That was a joke. It's, that's, that's <laughs> so sad. That's so sad. It's like dead, dead cat lady's house, whatever, and all the cats band together to pretend that she's alive so that they can collect the welfare checks. Dude, that's straight out of the fucking movie I just mentioned, too. That is so stupid. Oh. Yeah. Don't Tell Mom. Well, nothing's all right, now, sad. just, just, just... Because it's a classic, you should go see. You should uh, go find it and see it. Mm. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. It's a fantastic movie. So so far, I've seen Evan post two links. One is uh, the, the the tax carbon, which I actually I, I honestly support if that's what you want to do. Right, that's the most efficient way to deal with this. But we should do it in a pragmatic well. manner. That yeah, no no no. Like I, I mean, if you guys if you guys actually wanted to tax carbon, we can do that. And you know oh, how much yeah, there's no way to do it. But you know how much it would cost if we were to actually <laughs> you know, do, deal with this? It's like either anywhere between paying people two dollars for every ounce of, every ton of carbon that they use, or uh, it costs a max a maximum of two dollars per, per ton of carbon. It's like nothing. The the big problem, like so, this I, I talked about the social cost of carbon not too long ago, All right. right? And this was this was like the big thing that Obama was going to do to prove that. Uh, you know, climate change was a crisis, and we needed to intervene. And this oh, was right, how right, was right, yeah. It, right? Yeah, they had right? to fudge the numbers. They had to fudge the numbers a shitload. And there are actual records of how we're supposed to calculate environmental impacts from policy and what, you know, future discounting rates we're supposed to use and, you know, what what the basis of our assumptions are. If we actually use the stuff that we're supposed to use per the Obama-era documents of what they did for their initial group, it'd be like two bucks. Per ton, nothing would happen because it's like forty-five bucks a ton in order to switch to in order to take action. I'm not even 
going to say switch to renewables in order to take action on climate, in order for it to have a significant impact on cost, you'd have to be at 45 bucks a ton. Now, with the actual cost of inflation, all, mm-hmm. of, all of energy pricing is going to be, you know, kind of all super fucked up. But, yeah, if we, uh, if we actually start talking about tax and carbon, I, I support it, but I also want it to be a revenue neutral tax. Right, so we tax you know what the carbon. funniest thing is? The funniest thing about the, the way that energy uh, costs have been going up is, is all this inflation that happened over the last year to basically keep the, the stock market going up during a major, major downturn. Um, part of that was, was done preemptively in case Trump got back into office so they could rat fuck him right at the start there and say, look at this, look at, look at what he's been doing to the country. All the energy costs have gone up. Well, you're paying at the pump, and then now it's all backfired because you got fucking uh, uh, Biden's Biden America. There. Well, I, see, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the prices would have gone up as much. Uh, with well, you probably would have, like, you know, not no, had stepped in. an issue. Well, uh, it, the, the, because the, the markets freaked out as soon as uh, Biden got in. The, the as, problem as well that you would. have is that there's been a lot of speculation on futures, mm-hmm. and the speculation on futures is driven because he shut down the pipeline. And the pipeline was going to drop the cost of gas, uh, gas and oil drastically because it would have cost yeah. a fraction to ship by a pipeline than it would by a train. By a train. Which is aren't those trains now. owned by Berkshire Hathaway? They, those trains are owned by Berkshire Hathaway. So why was why really is it big. Berkshire Hathaway? That that name just rings a bell to me for some reason. You know, it's something about Warren Buffett. It must be like Anne Hathaway, you know. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Warren Buffett. You guys saw this, right? This uh, this little thing I mentioned uh, yesterday before before a set event was supposed to have taken place? Uh, yeah, I always assumed that that was bullshit. Yeah, I, I pretty much assumed that, too. But the amount of people that were just, like, up my ass yesterday, like, didn't you know anybody could post a Craigslist? Like, yeah, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter if it's true or not uh, at this point. Yeah, the I mean, you really... is, there's a specific time and place, and you could go look at it if you want. <laughs> yeah, that that's really something. So, um, apparently, someone else investigated the hell out of it, um, and it turned out it was true. And then, of course, the thing got taken down. Oh shit! Really? As far as, as far as I could tell, like, yeah, again, I, I had not heard internet. about this at all. So, uh, breaking news, I guess. If you hadn't heard, there was meant to be a great book burning of Doctor Seuss books yesterday. Yeah, well, 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. In uh, the area of San Diego. Yep. Which, see, okay, well, the area makes kind of sense. Go ahead but, and read, I mean, read through that list. I think that pretty much says it correctly there, and I can I can annotate here as needed. It's <laughs> Craig's own, and then and then uh, they came for poem. Uh, see, we're, we're not burning books. Uh, it's just we're not, not going to be the focus this year. That was Virginia. And then uh, we're we're just not printing it anymore. That was Dr. Seuss's own fucking company. And you can't buy it here. That was Amazon. You can't sell it here. That was eBay. And then now nah, we're burning the books. And that's this now, person out there why, in California. Why is it, what is the the logic behind banning Dr. Seuss books? Well, I've heard an interesting theory. Just recently, Melania gave a lot of Dr. Seuss books to a lot of underprivileged kids, and they hate them so much that they had to do it. Uh, and that's that's a very real possibility because, I mean, these people are made of spite and stupid. So that's yeah, about well, the mean, most I, stupid and spiteful thing I could imagine. I think handing them all Perrier cans of oxygen would be pretty much the perfect way to solve this problem then. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I mean, it would get them off their own parts for a little while. Ah, <laughs> uh, Perrier... You know, he's making a Spaceballs reference. Indeed he is. Indeed he is. <laughs> That's a deep cut. That's a deep cut. Yeah, well, he's he's trying to go back to being Princess Vespa there with his fucking nose job. <sighs> well, so, you know. Uh, what, I, what I'm really getting to eventually here, my, my end goal there was to get to a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 reference. But, I mean, we can cut to the chase if you want. Ah, oh, come on now. Nobody Use the Schwartz, to, uh, my man. Use the Schwartz. The Schwartz is, yes. <laughs> but I will have a link to this tweet, too, because it's it's pretty much spot on. And the, the craziest part of that is, I mean, all of this kind of happened over the course of a year, but this last bit, 
literally one, two, three <laughs> days in a row. Like each each of these line items, you know, if you take the first and last item off of that list, is it, one day separated. Yeah, it's literally fucking one day. So it's, it took about three, four days for this whole thing to happen. Yeah, I'm I'm very impressed with how quickly they're moving. Now the question is, how quickly will this upset normies? It's starting to now, but uh, not at the rate. The blowback's gonna be so spectacular, though. I, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna do like that pendulum. The amount of stored energy when that swings back is gonna be harsh. Oh yeah, even more than a tower of concrete blocks held up by cranes. Mm-hmm. Like, this is this is further that like they thought Trump getting elected last time was bad. Yeah. This, Oof. Well. It it doesn't end the way they think it ends. It really, really doesn't. Well, the the thing is that they they hated on Trump for nothing. No, right? largely, and yeah. So it's like they thought that he was uh, kind of the. I mean, they. It's idiotic to even imagine this, but it's like they thought that the man was the source of the world of today, and he's nothing more than a symptom. Right. You know. Yeah. It's and like, the uh, thing is, it's, it's the thing is, when they put in ridiculous. Biden, right? Biden comes in and goes, "I'm just going to undo everything that Trump did." But Trump did everything that he did for a reason. Like it wasn't political with Trump. Yeah, no, it, it was the, legitimately the, the about trying to help America and Americans. And it so really, it's it like, really okay, was. well, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, oh, the uh, what, what's the one? Operation Talon, right? That was protecting kids and like sending yeah. away sex offenders, right? Mm. Yeah, like mm-hmm. rapists and murderers. Oh, but but don't don't forget, right? We can't call we can't call you know pedophiles pedophiles because that's an insult to pedophiles or something like that. Oh, that's that's mm-hmm. right. You know, uh, you don't, you wouldn't want to uh, you wouldn't want to offend a marginalized group. After all, mm-hmm. fuck know, them, uh, bring them all up. <laughs> scandalous, scandalous, Craig. I can't believe you. I'm so triggered right now. You know what? Craig is just a bigot. Can't we yep. just accept that right now that Craig is a bigot? I accept it. I don't I don't like kitty diddlers. They can all die. <laughs> well, from what I understand, that's not an entirely uncommon uh, position to take. So Well it apparently is if you're progressive. It depends on where you fall on the spectrum. And it is a spectrum. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Look, now that I think is a little bit insulting to Steve here. It is a little bit insulting to Steve. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Well, speaking of spectrum, autists do not sit there and appreciate kitty diddlers. You're you're not a uh, you're not a fan of the map. <laughs> it's not a it's not a cartographer appreciator. Listen, not listen, a cartographer I, I, appreciator. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was always told that maps point the way to treasure. Oh my god. You <laughs> a glorious could, a glorious treasure hole. <laughs> you you could make Holy the argument, god. I suppose. Well, if there uh, was a chance for monetization to ever happen, it is completely gone. Ah, uh, don't worry. I just got uh I just actually got a uh questionnaire uh survey from YouTube oh. the other day. They were wondering how they could make my experience better and I <laughs> I filled them in on uh, what they could do that would assist in that. It largely Fire came down to... Uh, did it did, did it involve getting treasure maps? <laughs> my God. It did not involve treasure maps, although I would say treasure could be involved in assuaging my upset with them. Uh, Monetize me, bitch. <laughs> just, just remember, X marks the spot, boys. Dig here. Jesus Christ, dude. Ah, uh, <laughs> pirate names are. So the other article I linked here. They're coming for the booty. <laughs> oh, now we're getting into Catholic names. <laughs> Open it up over here, guys. Open it up. Okay. Uh, speaking of, he just went to Iraq. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he go over there to bow to them too. No, he, he was, was actually, actually just kind of Christian. Christian. It was creepy. 
I don't think he even sniffed anybody. It's really wow. weird. How, he's not even going a whole hog Christian now, is he? Yeah, I know, right? It's like oh come on, we need we did need. He, did he touch an altar boy at least? Well, not on camera, but you know he was over there. I mean, they've got the well, of course, as Joe Biden would say, they have their own cultural norms. Uh, let's let's be honest here. By the time you get to the level of the Pope, you don't need to touch the altar boys because the altar boys really want to touch you. <laughs> Man, or, uh, that, yeah, that just yeah, that yeah. screams almost K-pop levels of degeneracy there, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, well, sorry. I mean, Catholicism and K-pop. I mean, you know, is there I mean, really that much of a difference these days? Well, I mean, one of them is genetically engineered specifically to cater to a certain age age demographic, and then the other one is uh, is a religion. And I'll leave it to you to figure out which one is which. Hmm. If you hadn't made the genetic engineering reference, I might be a little on the fence there. But you know what? I think that a uh, round of bat soup would just uh, help everybody out. Oh, did you see? Um, did you see that there's a there's a new uh, a new virus being studied out of Xinjiang. Of course um, there is. From, from a, a, Why from not? A specific lake from a specific lake in uh, Xinjiang. Um, I can't remember. It's it's E something or another. Um. But it's uh, it's it's far worse than COVID nineteen. Of course uh, it is. Far worse than SARS too. It's course. more infectious it's, and it's more deadly, deadly, right? Yeah, exactly. For this, both. This is this is again. We should never have yielded the power unto the government to tell us anything of what to do, because there's always going to be another threat around the corner. Well, and and what was it, was it Thomas? Was it Thomas Paine who said? I think it was Thomas Paine who said. Uh, the individual who uh, would trade security for freedom. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. That yeah. motherfucker had, had, like, he loved his farts during sex, and he loved, like, freedom. And I love Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> he was a pervert to the core. Like... I tell you what, those Tommy fathers could drink, too. Bless those men. Did you, yeah. did you ever read any of, of his, like, sex letters? Benjamin Franklin uh, had Jesus, Yeah, no. he did, and they're disgusting. I got through like three of them, and I realized I didn't want to fucking read this shit. Uh, it's like something off of DeviantArt. Just I'm, him telling his sex partner about how awesome it was to do all these awful, horrible things. You know, I'm just like, why are you kind writing this? You, could, you, you cemented this in permanence in the fucking record by writing this shit down, you disgusting old man what uh, what I think was the funniest story I heard was How Benjamin Franklin American? Benjamin Franklin was originally sent as like the colonists representation to the crown and so he was <laughs> he was enjoying himself <laughs> immensely as the first like American diplomat and then all of a sudden yeah. he finally got word that the colonies were in revolution and he had come up with on the spot how he was uh, aligned with the colonies so it's really fucking funny Dude is uh, a character and a half. <clears throat> yeah. All the great men are sex perverts, though. That's really that's really the lesson I take from Ben Franklin and Einstein. Yeah. So the thing is, well, I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that they were great because they're a sex pervert. So you don't go out there I, and say, I, "I'm going to be great by becoming a sex pervert." You, you sure? Because I'm going to go buy my that one off right now. <laughs> just to head that one off right now before you take that to the extreme. I know you're going to. Listen, treasure maps, they're they're online and they're they're abundant. Yeah, it's 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 uh with them it's not X marks the spot, it's AOA. Oh I'm I'm sure that it is X marks the spot. It's probably an arrow pointing to to their target there. God them and fucking it, fur bags. Just holy shit. Ah, sigh, furries. You know, it's yeah. it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like when people talk about the Middle East and they get all up in arms and say Hitler just had the wrong religion. Hmm. It's horrible shit, man. But at the same time, like you kind of get to thinking. Ah, oh, sigh, sigh. So gender assumptions harm progress on climate adaptation. They oh, sure, they sure, sure do. Mitigation and adaptation. All right. So, so where's so the adaptation my, problem? So just to, my, just to read this out, the, the opening paragraph just really spells it out nicely. And I'll just read that out and let everybody bask in it for a moment. 
Scientists say outdated assumptions around gender continue to hinder effective and fair policymaking and action for climate mitigation and adaptation. Yeah, so uh, no scientist says that because there's no scientific way to, to, to prove the future. Yeah, the only ones who do are scientists and scientologists. I, I would not even go with scientists on this one. This is straight-up slacktivists. <laughs> so, in any case, like, I, I see these kinds of articles whenever it comes out to, like, the reason we're not making progress on this progressive goal is because of gender inequality. And 90% of the reason that I think that they advocate for this stuff is because they, they can use gender equality, which is something we all kind of, like, support. Like, we don't really want to keep women down. We don't want to keep, uh, you know, people of color down or whatever the fuck you want to call them. Right? We don't want to do that. That's 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 part of our moral fiber is that we believe that people should be treated equally. Well, we believe equality, is, not equity. Well, and those are views. True, true. But I, I see this every single time I see these articles on like uh, people of color or or gender and how this is going to advance. Like if it were just more equity, this would create a more fair world. This is uh, all abjectly I see is wrong. This is a Trojan horse because basically yep. they're going to try to force equity. And in so doing, they're going to force people of their political alignment into positions that were held by people who disagreed with them before. And it's nothing more than a half-assed metric <clears throat> to get – basically inflate their political numbers without having to do any of the work associated with – any of the real work associated with actual policy design. And that's really what all this stuff always is. And yeah. never minding this sort of uh, shit wrecks organizations. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think there was an article back in, like, 2015 or 2016 in Quillette that right. was arguing that the whole reason for wokeness is a way for, like, it, it was basically glorified virtue signaling amongst uh, people who went to elite institutions to signal that they went to elite institutions. And I don't think that's entirely correct. I think that it has more to do with, like, more along the lines of, like, replacement theory. It's basically for a whole bunch of people who don't have any knowledge, skills, or abilities, or uh, th that's that's kind of like standard psychometrics for like hiring and firing people. Uh, it's people ways for people who don't have those things to try to to gain artificial prestige by advocating for a theory that places value on things that don't actually require any effort, like your inherent characteristics. <laughs> Being black does not require effort. Being a woman does not require effort. It is. It requires effort to be a qualified scientist. It requires significant effort to be an engineer. So instead, we put emphasis on these other things that don't require effort, and in so doing, we allow people who didn't go through the effort of, uh, you know, becoming qualified to occupy positions that they wouldn't otherwise have if we were doing dealing with meritocracy. Now, you see, you actually bring up an interesting point here because it, it works perfectly into a segue to the next thing. As posted, <laughs> which is basically functionally useless people finding themselves in positions where they can demand for, um, they can demand access to uh, opportunities th purely through their uh, purely through these these uh, immutable characteristics of birth or circumstance. Oh, yeah. like Kim Kardashian. Okay. Sure, Kardashian, Paris Hilton. Um, Meghan Markle, which is exactly what's going on here. I want to actually challenge you on Paris Hilton, right? So Paris Hilton, right. Paris Hilton is actually incredibly intelligent. Like everybody hates her for a lot of different. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that, but I mean, it might be because she, she doesn't show it. She, she actually doesn't. So like, if you actually go into her educational history, she's got like two degrees. She speaks something uh -huh. like six or seven languages. She okay, I have to ask you though. When you say when you say six or seven different languages, does "o" oh, come in me harder in six or seven different languages really count as speaking languages? Uh, no, she has actual like she can actually speak those languages. But okay. she determined she determined that it was easier to make money off of being a fame whore than it was to actually put in effort. Uh -huh. And the, for her, it actually worked out really, really well. She built an entire I career guess. separate from her family solely on being a fame whore and pushing the envelope. The downside is that she eventually pushed the envelope a little bit too far. She brought and the family claimed away. Out. Well, she sort of did, though, right? Like, the, the family cut her off. 
Yeah. Right? So, so you could consider that a flame out, but she's still, she's not like in the poorhouse. She still sits That's there true. and will sell all of those other attributes. A- and this is unfortunate. Like when it comes to women, women have a huge advantage. This is, we talked about this, I think, the first episode I was on. <laughs> like, I wish I was a woman because then I could sit there and be a hooker for money too. <laughs> like, that's something that, that you can't, men can't trade. We can't Not trade easily, no. Out. No, it's a rare breed, that one. It is. It and is. it's usually still, again, yeah. to other men that you're trading that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. There's not enough sugar mamas to go around. There really aren't. <laughs> so I, I I actually want to challenge you on Paris Hilton just because – not because I actually like her. I actually find her quite hideous. I don't particularly take interest, but I have been surprised when I actually looked at her resume. Well, no, that's just, I, have, I have not looked at her resume. All I've really seen it, is, is her as stupid as she is. She she acts like a skanky whore because it makes her money, right? She can she can go she will get paid to go get a fabulous new outfit just so that she can appear in a place getting a fabulous new outfit, right? And that is how she makes money now because she managed to milk that train. Now Kim Kardashian does it better. Uh, that she does. I think oh yeah, well Kim Kardashian opinion, actually has literally smarter. nothing to offer. I mean she came from nowhere. I, th- I think, in my opinion, it's because she's smarter at it. I, I agree with you. I think Kim Kardashian does it better. But there is, we have to admit, that there are those people who actually have the brains and choose not to use them because it is more profitable. Well, sure. Way. I mean, uh, uh, what's, what's her name? Um, well, you've got Dolph Lundgren. You've got uh, the lead singer well, from The Offspring. Yeah, so so there's Dolph. Um, what's, what's her name? The one, she was uh, Natalie Portman. Uh, she speaks, you know, like, what, five languages, and she has several advanced degrees. Oh, was Ashton Kutcher, he's a chemical engineer. Right. You know? And he, he acts like a dumbass every single show that he's on. His, his, right. like, his typecast is the dumbass yeah, that's, of that's the show. That's his stick. And, yet, and yet he is, like, he's actually a really smart dude. Right. And he's also not a goat fucker. Or and sheep then he, fucker, rather. Get people like Leonardo DiCaprio, who are absolute dumbasses, but try to act as if they're a super smart dude in really weird roles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, oh, and the uh, fucking Inception role was just so was so spectacular for him, wasn't it? I, you know, I actually I just watched that movie. It was not great. You see, I I liked I liked certain parts of it, and there was a lot of good intriguing bits, but then like. Wow. <laughs> like, all right, man, we, we got it. You have your favorite instrument. <laughs> like, I got that button on my website too now, pal. <laughs> I can press it at will. Oh, my God. You I know, don't know. Once I, I Michael Bay be... happened, everybody had to be Michael Bay. Yeah, and then there's the fucking lens flare now. I like lens flare. I Every actually like Every fucking lens scene. Flare. Not every scene. I admit that there were times in Star Trek where it was a little bit excessive. Right, a little too much there. Back it off, not. Somehow, somehow, I just found out that Joss Whedon is like supposed to be a hyper SJW, and yet he's just a douchebag. He's just a douchebag, yeah. Well, but he's a proto SJW. Ah, uh, is he a proto SJW? He's an SJW in that he's still he's still a director somehow. I I he He's does trying hard. He does good work. I uh, he does. Well, I, I mean, you know, he can he can put on a show where women seem uncomfortable, and it's a very <laughs> real experience. You know, when you watch that, and the I, only I, ones I, who aren't uncomfortable are very strong women, which also you know comes across as a very real thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, sigh. Oh Hollywood! I, I, like like Joss Whedon, Joss Whedon, you, like everything that he touches is amazing. I actually like most of the stuff that he does. And then you find out that he's a douchebag, and you're like, oh, well that's too bad. Well, I think what happened was like he got done with Firefly, and that's just like, all right, how do I fuck this up? I got a reputation now. Uh. I don't know, man. I, I, he did he did good with Star Trek. He did good with Firefly. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I haven't seen in a long time is Dollhouse. I think that's one of his, too. Hmm, maybe? I don't know. That sounds familiar. It was it was this uh, sci-fi show where they had the ability to... Basically, the, the premise was they would take people who were serving sentences, hot women who were serving sentences, and then they would find ways of, like, altering their brain such that they could be different characters. And then they would get, basically, uh, they'd serve their five or seven years in the dollhouse and then be released at the end of it. And one of them has unique neuroarchitecture, which, which prevents her from fully wiping at the end of every session. But they'd be loaned out as, like, dates to rich people. Hmm. I'm pretty uh, sure that's, that's one of his. Pretty fucked up. Huh. That sounds, yeah, that really sounds like one of his fantasies, doesn't it? It really I, does. I that think... sounds like something Dan Schneider would be involved with as well. I think that was Elijah du- or was Dushku? Is that what her name is? Mm, yeah. Who was like super popular and then disappeared. Yeah, she was a good actress, and then uh, I guess that they just backfired on her somehow. Yeah, like what happened to her? She just she just maybe she just made enough money and got out. Maybe. Well, I wouldn't blame her. That's possible. You know, you also say no to the right slash wrong person, and you don't work in Hollywood anymore. So. Yeah. That's also a thing. Like, like literally. So, so I'm looking. I'm well, looking she was at her her oh. She was like 92 to 2009, and then so like he goes through her yeah. filmography of all these different things, and it's 2009 to present, Dollhouse and other work, and it's like that's the last thing that she did. Nuts. Huh. Yeah, well, I remember she was the daughter in, uh, in that fucking Schwarzenegger movie where he got on the fighter jet. Hmm. Um, don't with the nukes. True lies. Yeah, 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 no, it looks it, it looks like right after she did Dollhouse, that was the last thing that she did. That's weird. Hmm. Huh. Uh, that is peculiar. I mean, she's that, talented, too. It's like, I hope, you know, maybe she's just living off the money and, and loving the life. I mean, it looks like it looks like occasionally she just does, like, a couple fan-type events and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Good for yeah. her. Getting out of that shithole that that quickly, that's that's some spectacular work. Yeah, so it looks like she just probably set herself up and said, fuck it, I'm done. Oh, man, I would if I had the opportunity. Yeah, you work you work for, what, 10 years and you're done? 12 years? Well. Yeah, pretty slick deal if you can get it. And it looks like, looks like she still does some Comic-Con stuff and those kinds of things, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I will hit you up another one since we're kind of still ripping on the climate change thing here. Did you uh, get a chance to look over this one before? Uh, th- this is this is a constant retarded thing that they put out. Oh, Basically, yeah, it's, what it's ends up really, happening really every dumb. single time, every single time we get into one of these uh, discussions, what you have is you have a whole bunch of folks on the left who go to the third world and they say, "Hey, you guys." You guys can't industrialize. All you brown people you can't have electricity because if you have electricity, the world will go to shit. And that's that's technically true, right? If like India and and China were to consume electricity at the same rate that we are consuming electricity, and we had the same like carbon footprint, the amount the emissions rate would be just off astronomical. It would be off the friggin' charts. Yeah, if you think industrial revolution era London was uh, smoggy, well, yeah, like you, like, you know not, nothing. We're talking about altering the face of the planet here. We, that, that probably truly would. So when we start talking about, like, all of these doomsday scenarios associated with climate change, they are not because the United States is burning a couple coal plants. It's because they look over at China and see two billion people and counting and go, holy dear – or no, what is it? It's a billion in India and, like, three billion in China or something like that. But it's uh, it's 1.6 billion in China alone. Yep. And uh, it's like what 1.3 in the uh, in the rest of that area, something like that. And then and then there's India, which had a billion people on its own. But basically, between yeah. those areas and then Africa, the worst case scenarios for climate are all of a sudden they choose to live the same lifestyle the United States does, and oh yeah, they're still producing children like you know rabbits, in particular with Africa. So it's actually very racist when they come out with these like world-ending climate things. But every single time they come into one of these agreements, they go in and they go to the third world and say, you guys, you guys can't industrialize. 
right? If you guys can't get electricity in washing machines and no longer beat your women, the world is going to end. So what ends up happening is, uh, is the third world comes back, rightfully so, by the way, and says, well, if you don't want us to industrialize, you need to give us money, right? Yep. And that's that's basically what they say. You need to pay for us. And those are carbon credits. credits. And those are carbon credits, and that's what they try to do. The only problem is that every single time we give them money, they go and spend it on, like, war and everything else, and then they go back to coal. So, and they said, so, hey, you know, you never said we couldn't do this. It was like, well, yeah. that was the agreement. No, no, it wasn't. We don't have the money anymore. Oh. Uh, so, so, <laughs> so it's this... Hey, I mean, this is one of the problems with renewables because in order to actually build out a grid like this, it is literally impossible financially for us to afford it, and we're a wealthy nation. And then we go over to these third world places and we start demanding they do it. Their their con their retort to us is, well, you guys have all this great like you know quality of life stuff that we want, and so we're going to go get it, and you can go fuck yourselves. And they're right to say that. They have every right to say that. I I don't blame them in any way, shape, or form. And one of the other downsides that we run, we run into, and one of the reasons that China is gaining the power and prominence that it has, is when they go spend the money and uh, on renewables, the ones that actually do it right, they basically go bankrupt almost overnight because it always costs a lot more than it's advertised. Yeah, and who bails them out? And then China comes in and bails them out, buys <laughs> out the project, and in so doing, they secure themselves access to natural resources in the third world. Things that we were trading for before because we told them that they had to go after this technology which doesn't really work and is super expensive and fails in 20 years. Uh, and, and then all of a sudden they put this stuff in and now all of a sudden they, they, they don't have the ability to operate it. They can't actually industrialize. They can't develop. And China steps in to bail them out and provide them coal plants and start doing all this infrastructure build. So not only did we spend the money and get nothing for it. But then we also spent the money, got nothing for it, and our adversary walked in and controls natural resources that, you know, we basically gave up because we were idiots. Which, uh, just to give a little bit of background on that specifically, there's a thing called the Belt and Road Initiative. And yeah. it, uh, it's billions and billions of dollars that have been poured into the world and infrastructure projects. Some of them being essentially roads to nowhere and elevators that go to nothing. Nonetheless, they put these things in. Uh, a, a really good example, I believe it's in... Uh, I so want to Nepal, say, Pakistan, Iran... Well, no, there's, um, there's one in, uh, and like, and southeastern India. Europe. I want to yeah. say... Oh, so there's the 17 plus 1 initiative in Europe, and Lithuania has basically just told uh, China to go fuck itself. They're going to start doing closer ties with Taiwan. Oh, and that, that, nice. is, that is one of those, those top treats at the end of the week that you want to listen to. Nice. I, well, as we all know, Taiwan being the superior China is just yeah. much better. And, you know, the rebels there on the mainland, they really need to submit to their superior Taiwanese leadership and just yeah, stop so, this whole farce and farad. So it's farad. funny, the people have been wondering how this is all going to end with, uh, with China. And, you know, the central China has always been central China. There's always been a rally to come back to it. But if you look at provinces like Xinjiang, Nepal, Taiwan, uh, and uh, uh, the Mongolian region, like these have all not historically been China. But they're China right now because of empire expansion and then communism collapse, not fully imploding the country. So they've been kind of limping along as these autonomous regions. And that might be one of those things where, where the, uh, the end result of this might be that there's a contraction in China. And you might actually see like Xinjiang, Nepal, Mon uh, Mongolia, and Taiwan completely let go. Uh, but that might require war. Well, I mean, China China is in a unique position, right? So China doesn't have any natural resources of its own. So they basically got to import all of their energy, and they have to import all of their food, which is one of the reasons yeah. why they're looking to do a lot of the nuclear stuff that we kind of didn't. Um, because if they can get you know things like molten salt reactors going, there's thorium right. everywhere in every place, and they, they're actually going to become sustainable. But right now they buy their coal from us. They buy their food from us. We we actually like 
they, they don't they have to import everything for their people right now, which means they're not self sustaining. And that's kind of what they're trying to do. Yeah. Because as big as they are, as large of a population as they have, they basically due to a lot of the environmental hazards that they embraced as well as you know, the socialism that they did, they've basically destroyed all of their capabilities of resource production within their own nation. Now what they do have there arguably, what they do have there is tons of iron. Mm-hmm. They but, do. But they also have nobody there who can competently fucking use it. Well, yeah, you know, when you have a cultural it. revolution and destroy your entire brain trust, that, uh, that'll do that. <laughs> yeah, and, and a lot of that iron that they – see, what they could have done is they could have just dug up all the iron. Instead, they decided to pull it all in from the fields and cause massive famine and kill everybody. Well, no, so, so they had all of the iron, and what ended up happening was they tried to get their own steel production gun after they basically executed everybody who knew how to make steel. Right. And uh, what ended – that ended up – Six of one, half a dozen of another, man. Well, it is and it isn't. It is and it isn't, right? So Fair enough. The key, the key thing is that after they sat there and they, they ran into the problems with their iron production uh, because they could no longer build tanks or weapons or whatever else they needed, they basically sat there and pulled all the farming tools that had been made previously, uh, yeah. specifically because the steel there could be melted down and reforged into whatever they yes. need. Yes. And so that's what ended up happening to China, and so that's part of why their agriculture is so far behind is they basically, <laughs> uh, you know, liquidated. They had to rebuild it all again. And that's one of the other problems that we're having right now. This is why why Trump started targeting steel, is they did start to get like steel production back up to decent levels and get decent quality steel out yeah. uh, in the last in the last two decades or so. So what they do is they dump it in markets and they they devalue everyone else's. Right. Stuff. Then they basically walk in and either buy out the infrastructure in, in places like the U.S., or they'll just – as soon as they crush their competition, they walk in and uh, you know act like a monopoly. They, they increase their prices and make a ton of money in the long run because – a, you know, American steel cannot sit there and go up the against the entire economy of China, and that's what China is counting on. Pretty much. That's how they run a lot of their businesses. Oh, and I found the uh, thing I was talking about. It's basically a super highway, but it goes nowhere. It's in Montenegro. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll uh, I'll link that for you guys here, and I'll actually have that in the uh, in the links for now, everybody as well. I'm gonna have to dip here in a minute. Oh, no, understandable. I'm glad you were able to make it and stay as long as you have. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised myself. That's okay. He's got to go after after his treasure map. Oh, that's terrible. You fiend. <laughs> I'm sure I can find something from Twitter for you there. You go I'm going to pret- pretend I'm too high to understand that one. <laughs> you can go chase after... I mean, you can go... The pirates were all down in your region. You can go chase after that treasure... <laughs> Yes, the the pirates of the Caribbean B and B. Man. Well, it's been a pleasure, sir. You uh, yeah. heal up, and yep. all going well. You'll feel normal again next week, and probably well night, before then too. Yep. Thanks, guys. You guys have a good night. Later, man. Talk to you later. Ah, uh, well, that's so sad. Yeah, it happens. He's got his bionic ears. He's got to get used to them. You know, I, I, what's also sad is, is alcohol is very expensive, so I can't even join him on the, the road to being in a happy, better place. I mean, you could. You don't have to buy the expensive alcohol. I buy the cheap-ass shit, dude. Oh, that stuff, okay. that, like, it, the the inflate... So I used to buy the... Uh, the, the, the oh, trulies, right, which are right. right. Like, I forget I you're in... Uh, it's like, it's like three bucks a, a friggin' can now. <laughs> like, oh, well, I guess that habit's gonna go away. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're in New York. I keep forgetting. That's um, yeah, nothing is normal price there, is it? Well, I mean, it's it's actually not so bad where I'm at, right? Like, my county. <laughs> so so, we're, if you if you come up to my region, right? My county, we uh, we have the the New York Racing Association, and basically, you know, my county turns into horse season. Uh, which they literally replicated in in Disney, and so they pay all my taxes. So my county's typically pretty cheap, but the problem is this year there has been no tourism, 
And so things are starting to, like, taxes are creeping up and prices are starting to creep up because everybody's margins got squished a lot more than they normally would. But it's not like it's not like city pricing where I'm at. Well, that's good at least. I've, yeah. I've been through New York City, and that was a long time ago, and I just remember the prices were kind of insane. Yeah, they, they, they are. They, they still are down in the city. You, you, you go down there, and you're like, you, you've got to be kidding me. But we actually have we have like sane and reasonably priced everything down here and. No, well, that's fair. I mean, other than your taxes. Yeah, well, uh, you know, what can you do? Uh, I have, and mm-hmm. I'm expecting those to go up. Maybe, maybe at some point we'll end up looking at uh, moving out just because. Androlf Kuomler has uh, blown some fifty billion dollars of state funds in his quest against Trump. Well, he. Uh... He certainly has his priorities. He certainly has those. He does indeed. They're, they're not good priorities. Uh, nope. They're, they're not good at saving lives. They're uh, nope. not really good for his own image. And they're not really good for New York either, but he's got his priorities. So I guess you can you can give him credit for that, you know? I mean, He does have his priorities. He does kind of make a really good villain. You know, he's a, he's a really hateable fuck, as you might say. Uh, you know, I uh, I used to think he was an idiot. I just think he's a sociopath. That's that's really what it comes down to. Like when when they turned around and they said, "Hey, let's go throw all of our our elder, let's throw our COVID patients in nursing homes, even though we have the Mercy Hospital ship and the the Janus Center." And then there was that church group that sent up something in like, you know, uh, Central Park. Yeah, oh, right. No. Yeah. When he chose not to use any of the resources available to him and just put people directly in harm's way so he could pretend that he didn't have any resources, that was when I stopped uh, yeah, believing that he was an idiot. That was that's being crafty like a fox. Oh yeah. No, he's um he's a snake. He's a snake snake. Yep. And this is without even, you know, talking about trouser snakes. Which uh, oh, there yeah. are we're up to five now, by the way. If you were Are we? Yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, I think it was somebody, uh, maybe a Congress critter or a senator, that was saying, you know, we shouldn't. There's only three sets of accusations at this time. We shouldn't make a big deal of it unless there's four. And then, you know, four comes out uh, Friday, and then five was uh, either Saturday or Sunday. Well, you know. It, this is going to probably end up going the same way as uh, the – what is that? Co- the comedian that was from Michigan. When they first started doing the Mo- Me Too's and he came out all in favor of Me Too's and then they Me Too'd him. I'm expecting this to go the same way, although I don't know if Cuomo will give up his power. I have significant reason to doubt that he has any interest in giving up or sharing his power. I would agree with you wholeheartedly in that. I think he might have it taken from him, though. Now, from my understanding, there aren't really hard and fast methods to do that. But where things are now, I think somebody might try and figure out a way. I I don't know. You know, de Blasio was able to sit there and use city funds to go paint political messages in the streets. Um, they they actively were basically campaigning rather than running the city. We we have a huge amount of debt that got piled up because they shut everything down for what appears to be purely political reasons, and there doesn't even appear to be a way to come out of it right now, right? Like we, we still don't have guidelines on how we're going to get back to normal and when they're going to end mask mandates and when they're going to uh, you know pull us out of lockdowns. You know what, that's a topic we should probably speak on for just a quick second, because we're looking at two very starkly contrasted Americas. We've got yeah, uh, Florida America, and Texas. Yeah, Frank's awesome, yeah. and mine America, which sucks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, we can even go with Texas, because then it's closer, because it just froze there, too, recently. So, you know, they're dropping yeah. all their uh, mask mandates. I mean, Yes, they are. They had to deal well, with the uh, bullshit power situation, you know, for a little bit. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, they, they, they had to deal with a bullshit power situation brought on by, you know, basically the federal government funding wind power as much as they have, right? Like, that was a huge advantage to Texas because they have great wind resources, 
but uh, the, the downside of renewables is storage, and that's what, like, that's the big thing that costs money. It doesn't cost a lot of money to put up a wind turbine. It doesn't cost a lot of money to put up a solar panel. It costs a lot of money to balance the load. That's what costs money, and that's why California pays through the nose and everybody else does. Now, it's not a big deal in Texas because the wind's kind of always blowing across them there, dusty plains. Uh, but then all of a sudden you get you know a sharp change in weather than what's predicted, and they have zero way to stop freezing or stop the turbines from freezing. So then they had to sit there and deal with that problem. Now they have masks, or now they they took out the, the no, they masks. don't have masks now. Yeah, they don't. They have they have nothing because their their infection count is low, and basically they're they're looking at Florida and saying, well, you guys didn't do shit this entire time, and everything worked out pretty well for you, so. Let's do the same thing, at which point, uh, you know, uh, Biden released 100 patients with COVID into the into oh, Yeah, the thank you for mentioning that. I was actually wanting to bring that one up myself. Yeah, so yeah. there was a uh, – and also, I believe they – Totally uh, by accident. Oh, yeah, I know. My bad, guys. My bad. Yeah. So so for, for folks who aren't aware, uh, as uh, Biden's had a little bit of a trouble at the border. Just a, just a teeny bit of problems at the border. You may have Namely, seen the photo that off, which I would love. I would love to know where they got those shirts. I I don't know. I mean, but, you know, the that's, Democrats that's came up against Trump. Bravo. Trump was very clear about the problem. He talked about it openly. He was very open with what he thought of the solution. It was, let's discourage this from happening as much as possible. And... While he wasn't 100% successful, he did significantly reduce the influx of people across the border. Had we finished off the border wall where we needed the border wall, that would have uh, helped a lot, a lot sooner because, I mean, you can't, you can't stop people who are determined from getting over a physical barrier. That's not possible, right? But they put in the bollard fencing, which slows them down long enough for, you know, uh, for, for, uh, what is it? Is it DHS or ICE? No, it's not ICE. It's uh, CB Customs and Border Pro- uh, Customs and Border Protection. Oh, and that. let me actually just cut you off real quick. Uh, this one's breaking as of earlier today. Uh, Greg Abbott is deploying the National Guard to uh, reinforce the border. Yep. So basically, Biden came in and he said, "Well, we're not going to do any of that stuff." Right, so all of a sudden, immigrants basically around the world got the message that America is open for business. So now there's a massive surge of people that are showing up at the border, and so all of a sudden, Biden had to reopen a lot of these facilities, like the kids in cages that Trump closed down, because Trump's policy of yeah, you're not going to actually get into the United States, no more catch and release, none of all of these other things, and you're going to sit there and wait in a Mexico border town until you get a trial, all ended up significantly impacting the flood of uh, illegal immigrants coming across the border. Well, illegal aliens, so I, we should say. Aliens, you know, sure. an immigrant is somebody that's uh, doing it the honest way, so let's at least give True. them that measure of respect. True. Um, but yeah, that's so, – so Trump had a solution. Yeah. It wasn't perfect. It didn't stop everybody. No, yeah. but nothing nothing is a perfect solution to the problem. No, and it, it was is, working a lot better than what we're looking at today and what we were looking at in 2016. And, and on top of that, right, when it comes to immigration, the biggest issue with immigration is the depression of wages in the areas where these people come because you take a whole bunch of unskilled labor and you basically flood the market. So the people who are the lowest tier of, of, of American society get hurt the most by people who are coming here illegally. And uh, now all of a sudden we create uh, poverty problems where there weren't poverty problems before. Now Trump attacked this from two fronts. He, he had targeted the immigration, so there was a, a decrease in the supply of cheap labor. And he targeted the, uh, the actual economic structure to, to put in a pro-growth policy. And Biden has done the exact opposite which has dismantled a lot of the immigration stuff, which has increased the flood of, of uh, aliens across the border. And he's decreased economic productivity as an astounding amount, which has you know, resulted in decreased wages. So we're probably going to see more poverty in the future, and we are gearing up towards stagflation, and we are gearing up towards uh, – which is a massive amount of inflation with a, a significant amount of unemployment, and that's all because of Biden's policy. Now – What's ended up happening at the border is uh, there's this buildup of people 
And when Texas announced that they were going to decrease lockdowns and mandates, all of a sudden, a hundred people or so that they kind of knew had COVID were released into Texas. Surprise, fucking surprise. And by kind of knew, that is to say they took these people in, they did the normal testing that they do, and amongst those... Now, that's not to say that there were a hundred with COVID released. There were well more than a hundred released. We just know that a hundred of them had COVID. So uh, a large group of immigrants that traveled together, camped together, and lived together with 100 people that definitely had COVID were all released into the interior of Texas right after Texas announced that it was going to decrease lockdowns and Biden decided that that was no bueno. So it, it does look a little bit punitive. I am sure the government has – Purely coincidental, I'm sure. I am sure, yeah. There is – no malice there. No malice. We're about unity. That's Joe bad. Biden's America is about unity, don't you know? You know what really what really irritates me here is when we start talking about the states and the borders, right? Why is it that New York is voting on what happens at our southern border? Why why do why does my state have a say in what happens at our southern border? Well, the, states that should be, the states that should be allowed to vote are the ones that are significantly impacted. Like if New York wants to do an Ellis Islands type thing and, and allow a ton of people into the state of New York and he wants to track them and go through that effort, I, I think that there's a, a decent legitimate challenge to the federal government restriction. Right? They can say, hey, we, we need these people. We need the labor. Let's let them in. But when it comes to like the southern border, there's a handful of states, and when you go to like New Mexico and Arizona and Texas – Right, and, and and even diving into uh, Florida because they have they have a similar problem coming from Cuba and, and the rest. Sure. Those places are like, yeah, we don't want the only place that's like, yeah, illegal immigrants is California, and that's because they have their heads so far up their ass that that like they're basically bankrupt. <laughs> like, why well, is it that we're not we're not giving Texas more weight in the discussion on it on Ill, illegal immigration? And an update on California. The uh, recall petition has reached 2 million signatures and is going through. We'll see what happens. Really? But it's happening. So things are getting spicy out west. <laughs> Governor Moonbeam. Going to run into some problems. And speaking of spicy, the Derek Chauvin trial is going to be popping off in a, a few days, and that's going to be something. Derek Chauvin. Which one's that? Oh, sorry. I should say the George Floyd trial. Ah, yes. That because one. George Floyd is the one on trial, right? And, oh, and, no. And let's let's be very clear. My expectation is the guy is going to be let go. And that is because they chose to go with a higher charge than was legally demonstrable. Yeah, the long and short of that is basically that, that they're saying... This guy, Derek Chauvin, went out that day with the intent to kill somebody. Maybe it was George Floyd. Maybe it was your mom. Maybe it was uh, your dog. But he was going to go out and he was going to kill somebody that day. It's largely their argumentative stance. And the problem that you're going to have with that is you have to prove that in a court of law, and that's going to be very difficult to prove. So, courts of law and an important piece of knowledge that everyone listening now or in the future should know is jury nullification. Jury nullification means that the whole jury can be nullified if one juror refuses to move. So if you find a case to be completely illegitimate, you might, for instance, say that uh, the party under trial is not guilty, and you refuse to move from that stance, no matter what you're presented. Well, a little bit more to jury nullification. The jury can come in and say things like, uh, "While he technically jury nullification can be as much as uh, while they technically violated the letter of the law, the, the implementation of the law in this case is unethical." Yeah. So, for instance, if you turned around and you were smoking weed in your own home on your own couch and not really harming anybody or doing anything, right, and a police officer 
happened to be walking by in the neighborhood and smelled some weed, then kicked down your door and caught you with weed and charged you with weed, you could make an argument for jury nullification because even though they absolutely violated the law, in this case, it, they weren't really doing anything that warranted the, the officer's behavior. Well, that is also to say that a, um, a jury can nullify itself. Yes. And in the case of in the case of the George Floyd Floyd trial, it's very likely that we're going to see a, a, a release here because they overcharged, way overcharged. Like yeah. manslaughter is the best that they could have done, because a and they could have got that everything. They, they, they could have got, got that. that. They probably could have gotten that. The problem that you have is that technically that the officer was following his training whether that's a good training or whether you like that training doesn't friggin matter uh, knee knee hold knee presses knee holds those kinds of things are allowed the guy was in in a uh, what looked to be I mean a drug induced state from when I saw the video yeah and based uh, on his toxicology he, reports based on his toxicology reports like he was clearly not well uh, ahead of time he had unfortunately he, ingested a lethal dose of fentanyl as well and Possibly had something to do with the outcome. Who knows? It very likely probably did. Possibly, the, uh, uh, allegedly. Of course, of course, you'll you'll still see the people saying that this alternative team went in and cleared him, which isn't what the, happened at all. The alternative team showed up and basically said, "We don't need to sit there. We we've decided based on the video that we our our conclusion is that he was murdered and he was in perfectly fine health. They didn't actually like look at the body or take toxicology." Which is why the secondary team hired by the family released its reports before the toxicology report had come back. Yeah. Kind of important. Yeah, yeah, kind of like, um, kind of like so much that's happening these days. You know, we don't get uh, we don't get the numbers in, and people just immediately jump to conclusions and reactions. I mean, it, it, again. We're probably going to see him get released. There's going to be this big outrage over it. But this is one of the problems that people don't seem to ever learn is that when you overcharge, you don't get anything. because, And that's the consequence of overcharging. You can't just turn around and be like, okay, well, we didn't demonstrate murder one, so let's go down to manslaughter. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, you, you, think you can't go back can't. in. Well, basically, you can't do what they did for this last uh, impeachment trial. You know, that, all of it, completely wouldn't fly in a real court of law. So don't think of any of that political theater as anything like actual legal They didn't, didn't have any evidence? <laughs> that part, or uh, are you talking about the... Uh, oh, the one where they wanted to change up the charges so that yeah. they could use yeah. some of the evidence that they had that had been disallowed to be used. Right, well, so basically what ended up happening was they had they had decided that they didn't want to use any witnesses, and then they realized they were losing the case, so then they wanted to call witnesses. And the reason that they originally didn't want to call witnesses is because if you actually call witnesses that were sitting there and watching the Trump speech, they would basically cite how he talked about, you know, a peaceful, you know, march there with peace and all this other stuff, other stuff, and they were trying to go with this fiery rhetoric approach. And uh, it was it was just not going to end well for them. So they decided no witnesses. They were just going to use the video of his speech, which they chopped up, and a handful of tweets that they edited as well, um, manipulated, uh, outright made fakery uh, yeah. on those and, tweets. And they got called out on that, uh, not they only did. on the floor, but by the people whom they edited. As a matter of fact, they added a check mark to some some woman on Twitter. To make yeah. it appear as though she were a verified user and therefore more beyond reproach than your average normie like myself or my uh, lovely co-host it's so here. Weird. It's so weird. It's like her response was, yes, Mr. President, we hear you. So it's like they were trying to make it out like there's this whole militia movement and marching orders and all this other nonsense. Oh, yeah, like the marching orders for what happened on the sex. Oh, wait, no. Was it the 6th? Or was it the 4th? Or was it the 3rd? No, it was the 4th. It was the 4th. What happened that day? What big, important, crazy thing happened in Washington, D.C. on the 4th? The 4th of this month? 
Yeah. Yeah, the fourth, you know. Yeah, all of all of nothing. Exactly. Not a thin goddamn thing happened. But, of course, they're going to maintain their walls and their guards and everything else because, you know, they're afraid of the people, which they should be. Absolutely. And I, I don't exactly want to say rightly so, but... Right, no, I mean, I, I'm, I, I sit, I sit wholeheartedly with Thomas Jefferson. I mean, it, it would be one thing if we had term limits, and I think a lot of this nonsense would go away. But, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of that tree of liberty and uh, fertilizing it regularly. Well, there, I'm, I'm telling you that that tree is looking thirsty these days. Thirsty, 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 thirsty tree. And you should get some water. It should. It should. And, you know, I'm I'm very concerned that the ones that will be doing the watering are going to be really upset that they volunteered to water said tree. You know, because there's people out there that will volunteer to, uh, to water said tree. And, uh, you know, they're willing volunteers, whereas I, I think the less willing of these volunteers will be really upset about the situation in which they found themselves in. I, I see a number of them on uh, the Biden L's account on the Daily, which, uh, by the way, is an excellent follow, at Biden L's. You can... Uh, at Biden L's. I'll have to take a look at this one. Yeah, they're they're putting out good stuff throughout the day. Do I have it open uh, currently? Let me see here. Yeah, B-I-D-E-N-L-S. And it's uh, just retweets of various Biden voters that, uh, you know, are not uh, are not happy with the situation they found themselves in based on their vote. Now, uh, let me see here. What's, what's the top one right now from one hour ago from, uh, oh, a, a purple-haired, uh, we'll assume, female. I voted for Biden just because I live in Michigan, and I was so scared we would vote red again. But ever since it was announced that Biden won, I have had such a terrible feeling in my stomach. I hate it that I voted for him. Boy, that's tame. That's really tame. There's some really, really good ones out here. Like people are um, really upset. Like Naomi Wolf, she worked with uh, Clinton and ah, Obama. That was a good one. And she's now been suspended from Twitter twice because of speaking up over. Uh, all this shit. Uh, the first one was right away when it, uh, she found out that he was going to be reintroducing lockdowns. It was like, we were told about lockdown. I'm like, no. No, you busy woman. You were told. You just wanted to ignore well, it because it, the orange man I, is so evil. I would I would actually disagree with that. So so I, I will say that I've had my fair share of interaction with Democrats, and I don't think they were. I, I really don't. So, so it is... <coughs> Well, it, I'm going to agree and I'm going to disagree. One, it's that the information was there. It's that they're it kind did. of ensconced in this media bubble. And I would I would entirely <coughs> agree with that. You run into things like the, the tax increases where Biden would say that. But don't forget they did. Basement Biden was their primary political strategy. CNN, M MSNBC, and the rest all ran a tremendous cover for him. So if you didn't actually catch any right-wing media, which what we, studies have shown that liberals generally don't, if you didn't catch any right-wing media on the subject, you would have no idea that he was proposing increasing taxes and shutting down Keystone and, and all of the other things that people are really kind of concerned about. So I would actually make the argument that I don't think the left actually did know what he was really for. They just knew that he was against Trump. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty accurate. And if you were to actually try and pin down his uh, position on that, you'd have had a lot of issues because he would say conflicting things. You know, in Pennsylvania, he says, no, absolutely, I'm not going to do a thing about fracking. San Diego, oh, fracking, no, it's gone. It is not a part of the future for America. So, you know, where do you uh, where do you fall in the middle on that yes and that also no? Hmm. Well, you can fairly safely assume that the middle falls more squarely on where does the money flow? <laughs> I 
Yeah, I'll put the uh, the link to the Biden L's just if anybody wants a. Found it. It's not a it's good not as good as I, Like I, I actually really like women posting their L's online. That one's really funny. Yeah, some of these are just tragic, but it is what it is. I mean, there's a lot of people that uh, didn't pay attention and really should have, and it is yeah. coming back to bite them. Well, you, you look at the $2,000 check thing. That didn't happen. And, I mean, what is it? The uh, I've seen some estimates that of the $1.9 trillion being handed out, of your $1,400 check, that amounts to roughly one-sixth of the total value. No, so they're taking no not even like, that. It's actually something like 7% is going. Well, oh, oh, really? Actually, yeah. I, yeah, no, that that's absolutely it. And as a matter of fact, of the $1.9 trillion, <clears throat> it's either 6 or 7% is directly applicable to COVID and COVID relief, including the stimulus. Of course, but it's titled the COVID relief bill. So, you know, it's all for COVID relief. Yeah, it's, uh, I haven't gone in too deeply, but uh, thankfully there was a, a really excellent fellow that just pushed the line. I want to say it's a representative out of Texas. Let me go back and look real quickly, but he actually had them uh, – yeah, it was Ron Johnson. He had them. <clears throat> excuse me. He had them read the whole thing out, ten hours and forty-five minutes. Did he actually get it read? I didn't know if he got it read. He did. He absolutely did, and he stayed there the whole time. Wow. I mean, bravo, man! You're a trooper. And I got a lot of comments on there, like, uh, "Well, you know, if you're not gonna, if you're gonna do this, then." We should only allow the people to vote on that that heard the whole thing through. I don't necessarily have a problem I, with that. I agree. I agree entirely. You know, if you, I mean, it, well, it's, I mean, it's just like we can take ASA Nancy Pelosi's there. own words on the original Obamacare. We've got to pass the bill before we know what's in it. I mean, how yep. how patently ridiculous is that as a proposition? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of like AOC. She turned around, what was it, the omnibus spending bill, and being like, hey, you dropped this in the middle of the night with just a few hours left to read it, and then she goes and votes on it. But that's how most people are doing it. Like, they, they fully know that they, they don't have time to actually go through this stuff. There's, there's no way you can read all of that stuff. I would I would go nuts if I had to listen, if I was tasked with 10 hours to go read that bill. I would go nuts. It's all legalese and ugh. But I do agree with uh, with increasing – the only way you should be able to vote for something is to, to pay attention to the whole thing and have it either read or on audiobook form confirmed independently before you can vote on something. I'd be at fault for that. And since we're on the topic of AOC, I'd like to just quote her with a uh, tweet that I recently retweeted. And, you know, as they say, broken clocks. Here is the profound danger of what we just did in Syria. A mad king president with majority disapproval of Americans just decided to bomb a nation without the constitutional requirement of congressional approval. Democrats who take war money pass the laws allowing that. And I say bravo to you. I'm not going to bother mentioning the date because really it's inconsequential. It's an it's an important statement that's well made and uh, poignant. Well, I mean, you know. It, Every single time, and I, I think that this is going to be kind of a surprise for a lot of a lot of younger liberals, is uh, that the Dems will sit there and they will throw a temper tantrum during an election cycle, and then if they gain power, they basically go right ahead and do everything that they said that they were upset about, right? So whether it be war crimes, when, when I was uh, when I was in high school, it was Bush was in office and it was blood for oil and war crimes and all this other stuff. Obama gets in and within two or three months he he was already dropping bombs in Libya without congressional approval. And not a single person showed up in the street to protest. And this is without even getting into the uh, American and family that was uh, bombed without any kind of uh, congressional approval. Or I should say drone strike. I and, mean it... And the whole precedent that that raises. You know, killing Americans on uh, foreign soil without any kind of approval or oversight. Well, there was that, that article that was arguing we should be, 
We should be doing that to our political opponents, or Democrats should be doing that to their political opponents not too long ago. Yeah, that, that very specific argument was made. I, it might have been by AOC. I don't think it was. It was uh, It was an article. It was, was it? a WAPO article. Yeah. yeah. I think it was WAPO. Wow, I really hope it was a talking head as opposed to an actual sitting person. Yeah. I mean, that, that, I mean, there's not really much of a difference, but at least the one's unelected, right? True. True. And, I mean, it, it is, you know, problematic. No matter how it's done, it's, it's problematic. Sitting there and going after your political rivals just because they're your political rivals is a problem. Right? We, we should never be, you know, dissuaded from that. But I don't think it was a, uh, an actual politician. Now, granted, AOC has tried to sit there and get her political rivals kicked out of Congress, but that's not to say that, that she's uh, she's actually called for their execution. No, no. Thankfully, she hasn't uh, she hasn't gone over that line, and we don't have gulags for her to send them to, so she can't really call for it. So, that's uh, she was it. calling for the gulags, so she's working her way in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. You know, but you've got to. You gotta tiptoe there. Yeah, you can't just take the big old steps. But you know what? The uh, the gulags is gonna be like uh, the gulags in America will be a lot like uh, what is it? What's that? Uh, the middle place between heaven and hell. Oh, purgatory. Uh, yeah, it's like purgatory. That's where all the cool people hang out. Mm, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Oh, speaking uh, of uh, cool people, I have uh, learned that the Chinese have recently. Uh, determine that homosexuality is a mental disorder and that uh, this is actually totally fine with LeBron James. Uh, being a big man in the NBA and such a fan of, uh, you know, China, it seems that LeBron, as a black man, that, you know, which is kind of known in uh, that sector of society, they're often not big fans of the uh, homosexual persuasion. So, you know, uh, he's just uh, coming uh, out with uh, the way that he truly thinks, you know, with his support of uh, China, their death camps, and their treatment of the uh, Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Yeah, so, with Disney so, as well, obviously. When it, when it comes down to the LGBT stuff, I I don't know. I, I have no particular issue whether you are uh, lesbian, gay, or bisexual. Like, who you choose to have sex with is literally your own business. And I, I do think it's as much a sexual preference as anything else. Uh, if you go to the original Kinsey studies, there were very few people who were hardcore homosexual or hardcore heterosexual, as in they would only ever possibly have sex with a member that was of their sexual orientation alignment or preference, however you want to put it. The mo Most of us are a, a variant of... Most of us are, like, heterosexual. Uh, but, you know, if, if we were in a situation where we didn't have another choice, we would, you know, m go with that, right? If I'm stuck on a desert island and the only chance to get my willy played with is another dude, I will probably make an exception on that desert island. Certainly after several years of sexual deprivation, because that's just how we operate as a species. Sexual contact is very important to our brains and our neurochemistry. When we start talking about the LGBT stuff, I don't see anything, any harm that's done. I really don't. I, like, they, they, I've seen people try to make studies arguing that it's, uh, you know, demonstrably bad for kids raised in gay households. But the reality is they tend to be higher socioeconomic status, and so they tend to do very well there. And it's more or less, uh, you know, people have tried to make the argument that you really need a, uh, you know, a two-parent uh, or a, a, a father figure or something like that in a lesbian household or a mother figure in a gay household. The truth of the matter is you need two parents. That's, you that's what's been considered. As long as there's no abuse, basically, you can raise an all right kid. Right. The perfect the, situation is a mother and a father, being the, honest. The, I mean, you're going to build, you've got more uh, building blocks to work with there. Well, it, it allows you to so, – so gender roles, for the most part, as much as the average feminist will hate this, right? Gender roles have a place and a value in our society. We are specialized creatures. They the, work. The two, gen as, the as two genders say. are – they are, right? And, and the two genders are specialized because it's very advantageous to specialize. If we have so, – so your males tend to be 
you know, we, we have more muscle mass, we have thicker skin, we can take more damage and we can deal more damage, which is necessary because for, you know, three or four months out of the year, the women in your average tribe would be out of commission with the last, you know, trimester of the pregnancy and the first month or so of, you know, feeding the kid. So you really don't want to put, like, equal hunting dependence reliant on all members of the species if one of them's out of commission for three months. That's, that's generally bad. So specialization becomes very advantageous in that kind of a scenario. And we, that specialization continues to socialization traits, uh, you know, geometric, uh, what is it, spatial orientation in men versus verbal and linguistic skills in women. Verbal and linguistic skills in women appear very, very early on, and uh, spatial orientation in men as well. The biggest difference starts to come in as soon as you hit puberty and the like, right? So when we start talking about gender roles in society, a, a male and a female member of the household will provide a child a good basis for how to interact between the sexes in, an, in a greater context. But there's not really a lot of harm that's done in, uh, you know, a, a, a two-male household or a two-female household. There really isn't in, any significant in, harm done there. Not, not intrinsically. Not now intrinsically, we can look at right? statistics and see some things that are legitimately concerning, but not I have not seen any statistics that I find particularly convincing. Well, that's, that I have seen you know, that's a really deep conversation that we actually probably should get into, but I want that, I would want to get interesting. somebody that really does know their shit that's not just talking off of a little bit of knowledge. Because there's a I lot will say that I did, I did a lot of research. I saw a lot of claims. I didn't see a lot of it backed up with evidence. The only time that I start seeing a mental disorder is the trans folks. And I want to be very clear here. I am not phobic of trans people. Like, spiders squick me out, needles squick me out, trans people do not squick me out. If you came to me and you said, Steve, I've been uncomfortable in my body my whole life, I want to make some physical changes, yada, 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 I'm like, great on you, right? Because that would be no different than you coming to me and being fat and saying, I don't like being fat, let's not be fat anymore. If you came to me and said, hey, I don't like being a male, I'd rather be a female, or I don't like being a female, I'd rather be a male, I'd be like, all right, whatever. I don't care as long as you are framing it in the context where you are acknowledging what you are, what reality is, and what you wish to move into. The problem that I do have is that right now we have a group of people who are trying to claim that they are women solely because they think they are women. And that I kind of agree with the Chinese on is a mental disorder. Because if well, you, you know, the, uh, the old DSM used to label as such. And well, I mean, there, it, it's still, there is something to be it, said for that too. You know, it, that's not necessarily a bad thing or evil. You know, we don't just like we're trying to. Uh, I don't want to say normalize mental illness, but humanize mental illness because a lot of people have a lot of problems. And, and mental illness should be right. Like we have stigmatized that across across the board, be it depression or anxiety or any one of these other mental conditions, we should have compassion for people who have them because they are suffering, right? But Absolutely. there is a fundamental difference between an individual who is coming in from a healthy approach and saying, I don't like this, I'm uncomfortable, I think this will make me feel better, right? And somebody saying, I am this thing because I think I am this thing. Or I think I, think I am this thing, therefore I am this thing. Or any, uh, uh, any such variation therein, right? That is a separation from reality that, uh, like, to, to Well, this be is someone that needs clear, help. Either they need I, help I, to I, answer the question, or they see, need I, help I to know. fix what's wrong with them. Again, if you come in and you're saying, hey, I'm uncomfortable with myself, I want to change how I look, right? I'm okay with that because you don't really, like... You're, you're coming in, you're having a very natural, normal conversation because we all go through a process of self-change all the time. The, the problem is that, that use of the verb to be. That's really what it comes down to. And those group of people who you know, are coming in and saying uh, we, should, uh, we should allow trans women to compete in women's sports or um, – Interesting factoid. In the NFL, there is absolutely nothing – barring a female yes. from playing. Nothing exactly. there stops them from playing. That's, that's true for all men's sports. 
Yeah. Almost all men's sports allow – there's no rule explicitly that forbids women. The reason that we have women's sports is because the best women in any sport can still not outcompete the best men in those same sports. Yeah, we can go to the uh, the Serena Williams example, which is uh, a number of years back, where she uh, she went up against uh, I think he was like ranked 300, and he didn't even put out a particularly good day. He'd apparently been drinking the night before and. He didn't handily win, but he won without putting out, you know, 100% of his game against yep. the top of the line. And, and um, Serena Williams is no joke. Like, oh, not at all. My ass in, she probably kicked my ass in tennis. But oh, she probably kicked tennis, so. both of our ass in tennis with you and me playing against just her. But Greg that said, I don't think either one of us actually play, play tennis, so, you know, that's not necessarily no, no, it, it, and that's that's kind of the thing is is whenever we start diving into the LGBT thing and everybody's like oh you're a bigot I, I, I'm not I, I don't care if you are a lesbian or you are gay or bisexual I see that as a a perfectly natural outcome of the randomized process that gives us the beautiful beauty of evolution right there are errors in transcription that are made there are unique processes and yeah what what do we say it like uh, legitimately three percent of the population. Is something like that, right? Something like that. And you know what? As I said in one of the earlier shows myself, it's it's okay not to be normal. Right. But just it, it say, hey, abnormal. I'm not normal, but that's cool. I'm me. I am who I am, and that's great, and people should just be okay with that as long as right. you're not hurting anybody else. As soon as you go into the, the – you, you change your framework from I'm different – and here's how I would like to fix it, to... Or I'm different, and here's how I'd like to fit in for that same or Either or. And you go into, I'm different, therefore your worldview has to change. That's where I draw the line. So when we start seeing these people who are coming out there and saying, hey, you know, uh, why are you upset with the, the pronouns that I chose? Well, the, reality, the reason is that you're denying reality. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I uh, talked to Craig a little bit here. But I, uh, I went out. We went out with. Um, I have a, I have a social justice warrior member of my my uh, extended family, and we all went to a, a beautiful little town that's right on down by the river. And uh, she turned around to me and she said that she's a pansexual. I'm like, so you're bisexual? And she goes, No, I'm a pansexual. I'm like, so you like goats? Like, what? That's, that's kind of what pan means. It's everything in the in the pan. No, no, no. I'm like, would you date a trans person? I'm like, no. I wouldn't date a trans person. She's like, well, see, I am more open-minded. I'm like, no, you're not. I just don't have to date a trans person because I'm an alpha male. I have a nuclear engineering degree. I work at a national lab, and I make nearly $100,000 a year. I don't have to date a trans woman. I can pick literally whatever woman I want. No Biden bucks for you, sir. Oh, no. No, I get my Biden bucks. I do because last year's last year. Well, the year that they're they're using as their register for taxes, I did not make as much as I do now. Woohoo! <laughs> but well, still, you came in the system, right? That's I I plan on it. I will be I will. Uh, they come in and they say they put in a, a cutoff for student loans. They'll be like, all right, woman, I got to go live in a box for the next six months. <laughs> I want my fifty thousand dollars. Gotta but, get those gifts. Gotta. But she, you know, she's turning around. She's like, "Why?" I'm like, "That's just a sexual preference, right?" Like I put down as a series of characteristics, and I want somebody who actually secretes real, uh, real hormones, and uh, you know, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to worry about a surprise at the end of the day. And that's really what it comes down to. She's like, "Well, see, that just means you're close-minded. I'm not." Uh, that's that's no different than me saying that I'd rather have a blonde or a brunette in my mind. And the same thing's true when we start talking about the uh, the overall thing. If you you know you say, hey, I uh, I don't like how I am. I'd like to change it. I'm okay with that. You come in and say, I am this thing because I said so. And you need to change your worldview. We're gonna have some issues. Well, that is. Generally, the most reasonable uh, reaction a person should have, and that's what most people do have. 
It's well, I mean, just that we've got some totalitarian assholes that have really got inflated uh, senses of value, and unfortunately, a number of them are in seats of power that are pushing that very narrative. And uh, yeah, I mean, and, it's and you start talking about some of the side things, like the kids coming in and starting to like make trans kids a thing. Sorry, if you haven't fully That's gotten child through abuse. puberty, if you haven't gotten through puberty, I don't want to know. That's not even like you are abusing your child if you're committing them to cosmetic surgery before they've been like able to exist on their own as an adult. You come to me when you're like 23, 24, 25, and you say I have gender dysphoria, I'm okay with you chopping off your genitals. Like, no issue whatsoever. You come to me when you're eight, big problem. Yeah. What, uh,. Well, I mean, we can just look at some of the studies that have actually come out due to this uh, horrible fucking bullshit situation we find ourselves in with the lockdown. And we found out that, what was it, um, six in nine trans-identifying children went back to their original uh, cis identity when removed from their peer groups, which ties in well with the study oh, that was completely redacted. The, uh, the yeah. one that was, uh, oh, what was that study? It that, was uh, um, trans, I mean, autistic, it, autistic children when exposed to rhetoric talking about the benefits of uh, going through gender reassignment will all of a sudden become quote unquote trans despite having previously had no interest whatsoever in being trans. And I can't remember if there was a specific term for it, right? The autogynophiles thing was a separate study that also got retracted on this thing. But it was – I know exactly what you're talking about. It's, it's the autistic kids will – Well, there's that one, and there's also the other one that was a peer group influenced uh, trend toward uh, trans identification. Yeah. That was the other study. But, yeah, both of those studies, as a matter of fact. I completely forgot about the, uh, the one about autistic kids as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's no. – and it all just ties into this. It's like there's – a lot of this is – you could say it's artificial – and there's a lot more conversation to be had behind that and around it, but we can say that there is something fucky that's up. Well, you know, again, it, it comes down, if you come to me and you say that you have been uncomfortable your entire life and you want to make some changes, I see no different than you doing the same thing if you're going to lose weight or anything else. If you come to me and determine that I need to adjust my worldview to accommodate your specific snowflake pattern we're going to have issues and these kids they get basically they, they get attention for being trans they get attention from their peers they get attention from their parents they get attention from their teachers well not and only so, that they get attention from pepsi cola and coke oreo right. specifically i mean so, see you toss them on social media and some kid talks about how they're trans and posts the right hashtags and he's going to get an outflow, or uh, he or she is going to get an outflow of emotional support, regardless of whether they are or not. And that, that, that's one of the problems that you have with things like social media. It becomes a very addictive experience, and you can get people who will go and become extremists in ideology solely because they are rewarded for becoming extremists in that ideology. And the same thing is true for trans, just that trans happens to have a, a larger dedicated support network both from progressives and, and woke liberals and the actual LGBT community itself. And the LGBT community has every right to be supportive of itself. They've, they've faced a lot, of, a lot of bullshit. They've had a lot of really raw deals over the last century. The only problem is that it's, it's we not have an to issue here line. in the West anymore. Now, well, I'm not going to talk about Eastern Europe. I'm not going to talk about China. I'm not going to talk about uh, Africa. But I will talk about uh, England, I'll talk about Western Europe, I'll talk about Australia, I'll talk about Canada, I'll talk about America, because that's the West. It's at Colorado. Sure. You know, that's the, uh, that was the gender reassignment capital of the world for a period of time. Huh. Back when I, I used to live out West, there was I, I drove by the, uh, the medical center that did most of the operations uh, several times, huh. actually. Well, Colorado's always been weird, so there you go. It's not. It's. Uh, I mean, it's kind of weird. The, the town is, like, super tiny. Really? Uh, 
Yeah, it's like super tiny. You you'll you'll drive by on one of the highways out there, and it's like this set of lights that's off of the main path. Huh. But yeah. Oh, uh, isn't that peculiar? Yeah, its uh, population is like nine thousand for the uh, the city. Well, I I fall back to Colorado being a weird place then. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was the uh, the sex change capital of the world. But, huh. yeah, I guess. Wow. So, I mean, I do understand. I do understand where China's coming from because you got the T's in there with the LG's and the B's. But I don't see the LG's and the B's as having a, a mental disorder. And I wouldn't even see, like, you know, you watch people like Blair White. Blair White does not have a mental disorder. She knows exactly what she is. Fair. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? That she comes in and she knows exactly what she is and what she isn't, and uh, I have the utmost respect for her as as an individual. But you start talking about these other people. Like I remember this dude uh, when I was at Westfield. He uh, he was eighty some odd years old. He'd show up uh, into the psych wing because they're not like a treatment wing, but it was just the wing of the college. And the dude, being an eighty year old man would come in with like short short jeans or denim denim short shorts uh something that looked like a yipe stripes gum top that was huh. he did a he did a crop top with and pigtails and i'm sorry there is no adult woman who dresses like that normally so having an 80 it's certainly not by the time you hit 80 years old so if you're coming in with this like it really looks like he's acting out a sexual fetish rather than acting out a real thing. And that's one of the other problems that you have is that there's people who very clearly have other mental issues who are hopping on the trans label, and it's nothing to do with their actual gender. They just want to, like, role-play being a chick. And it's become a... I think they're called autogynophiles. I and think you're right, actually. I, I think you're right, because I know I've heard that term used before. I, I, believe, I believe it is a sexual fetish that is uh, essentially fetishizing the transition from uh, a man becoming a woman. And they are essentially, they're, they're like turned on by themselves looking like a woman. Or in other words, Buffalo Bill. I don't know who Buffalo Bill is. Really? Silence of the Lambs? Nope. Oh, man. Nope. That needs to be put onto your must-watch list. Absolutely. Does it? It really does. Like, it's, it's legitimately well done. It's a good movie. It's got Anthony Hopkins as a serial killer, and it's ah, c'est magnifique. It's, uh, it's, it's good, uh, good spooky drama. Like, um, very enjoyable. Some of the follow-ups, maybe not so much, but the original is absolutely excellent. Huh. And, I will, uh, uh, I'll have to, I'll have to look into that at some point. Yeah, Silence of the Lambs, great movie. Like, great, uh, great fed movie. Hmm. So, uh, for, for our handlers and or, uh, uh, I don't know, if, if you guys don't like the term handlers, you know, just our, uh, just the ones that, our guardian angels. So, special agent guardian angels that are listening in, uh, if you haven't seen that movie, I would absolutely recommend it. It really puts you guys in a great light. And, um, just a good movie in general. So, um, to, uh, Anonymous Actually, Agent X and Anonymous right. Agents Y, you know, it's been a real pleasure. And, of course, to all the other listeners as well, it's been a real pleasure. And uh, just so that you know, you should give us a follow. I'm Evan, at that fake guy Dan everywhere. So that's Steve. He's at Ratman720 a lot of places, if not Everywhere, exactly. but you'll never hear from me. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Craig is... Uh, at Craig Bob 99 just about everywhere. Look us all up on everything. If you follow me, I'm generally active. And also, if you have any questions, ideas, comments, or anything, send them my way. You can drop them in the YouTube comments if you're watching this here. If you're on Anchor, just uh, hit me up on some social media or alt media. Most of us uh, at least exist on Minds. And if you're not on Minds as well, you should get on it. It's a solid platform. Yeah, Minds is, uh, is an amazing platform. But for anybody who's who's used to the curated feeds of Twitter or Facebook or any of those other things, the not. upside to Minds is 
you do not have an algorithm feeding you what you want to see. The downside of Minds is that you do not have an algorithm <laughs> feeding you what you want to yes, see. Yes, you have only who you follow and promoted tweets. So That's pretty much it. Well, that you can follow trends and tags, but you know, that's kind of a given. But either way, but it's... But even then, like, I, I will say that the interface for trends and tags is kind of clunky. A little bit. I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of it. But it is, uh, it is a superior platform in a lot of different ways. Plus, they, they operate with crypto as their primary means of paying for whatever it is that you want. You can get paid in their crypto. Very, very cool. Yeah. Worth your while to look up. And also, if you don't have it installed, get Brave because it's probably one of the cleanest uh, browsers out there as well. If you're going to be on social media, use Brave for it because it's going to – it's going to help. I mean, they're going to snoop, and Brave is going to stop them, mostly. If you tell it what to do, it'll stop them completely. So get yourself something smart, and maybe even look into a VPN. Ahem, VPN providers, I will advertise for you here. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. I mean, they advertise on every other channel. We might as well get one here, although we're a risky content. Not really. I mean, I'm trying to keep the edge from being too sharp. I don't know. I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll bring a sharper knife next next session. Uh, well, no worries. No worries. I'll uh I'll put something on the soundboard here with a nice loud bleep. See if I can <laughs> figure it out. Either way, thanks, thanks for coming uh, in. It's been a pleasure bye. talking with you, people. It's been a pleasure uh, having you listen. And again, hit us up anywhere, everywhere. Like and subscribe and comment and follow and uh, thanks for being here. Talk to you again soon.